Welcome to another episode of the Sour Grape Show. On today's episode, we'll be talking about what we've been playing lately, a few pieces of news, and then we'll get to our cleanup crew segment where we're going to talk about 2018 games that we haven't got to yet. Um, I think it was definitely a down year for me. There's a lot I missed. Uh, We tried to do a game of the year thing, but... I feel like this would be a, way, a little bit more fun way to look back on last year. There were only two or three titles when we were going through it that we all played, and I think they're pretty, like they've been talked about to death on other podcasts and shit, so I think this would be a cool way to look back on last year. But So are these games that we all haven't collectively played? or No, well, I think I think like if some, one of us played like it. the vast majority haven't. Or even just one person. Yeah. It's like we can go it's through like our, our list individual lists of stuff. We games do. we really want to really want to now play that we didn't for whatever reason. We okay. can go into that stuff. Uh, so, yeah, what have you guys been playing lately? Anybody want to kick us off since the last time we talked? I, I played a lot of games over the last week or so. I did, too. Um, yeah, it was a good week for yeah. it. I was traveling, so I tried to play a lot on the Switch, um, and that worked out. I played uh, Donut County. Uh, nice. On the urging of Ed, um, great game. That game was good. Uh, not much else to say. You guys talked about it quite a bit. Um, it was an enjoyable experience. Uh, I also played that music though. The music was really good. It was music. very like, I don't know. My my per- perception of that game is it's very calming. Like it's, yeah, it's a the very music was calming and like kind of it was kind of mindless to play. Like as you're going through, you never have to like. Think about it. Right, there's really no fail state right. aside from the that intense boss battle, which I actually thought was kind of fun. It was yeah. cool. Yeah, I it died was, on that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever died. I got close to dying one time in the first. Like you fight them a couple, like couple phases. There's like two phases. Yeah, uh, the first phase I got really close and then kind of figured out what I had to do and figured. Uh, it, it takes you a minute to, well, at least for me, to figure out what to do with the bombs. Like you're only supposed to yeah. pick up the smallest bomb, but yeah, right. once you get it's it's satisfying too. It is. Um, it was cool, and it was kind of a cool like towards the end of the game they add in a new mechanic, and it made it kind of interesting and dynamic. Because mm-hmm. um, the rest of the game you're literally just collecting. Uh, there's like one or two puzzles that you have to like use that throw. Uh, Tool. Right, and then in, and then there's like that bio lab where you have to pick up the key cards. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but yeah, kind of opened up a little bit. A little there. bit, yeah. That game was cool. Uh, also based on uh, urging from the group, uh, I spent some time yesterday and played through um, the Gardens Between, which is uh, I was on Game Pass, so yeah, I played that this week too. It's yeah. really good. It was a really really cool puzzle. Not really platformer, just kind of a puzzle. Game. Yeah, it had like. It kind of, like, threw me for a loop just because how many video games I play, but it had the, like, you didn't control the characters, you controlled time. Yeah, so, so you, there's you only press two right, buttons. time went forward, and if you press back, time went backwards. Kind of like, like grade? Uh, yeah, but, like, you don't control the character at all. So, like, uh, grade, you can, oh, like, yeah, you rewind. said less so, me, so, yeah. Yeah, the, the gameplay is literally just, you control time, you go back and forth in time, and then there's an interact button, and that's all you do. Yeah, there's two characters, and, like, so you could, both of them are You can are actually on a loop. play it with one hand, um, because you can use either joystick, so you could, like, just use, uh, one hand and do the joystick and right. then the interact, and, uh, it was really cool, though, like, most of the puzzles were pretty straightforward. I didn't. There was only like one time where I got lost and had to like look it up. Yeah, there it was. Uh, they were tougher than I thought they were gonna be. That's for, like I didn't. I struggled a few. I ended up looking up one, and I was just being a dumbass. There's a lantern in the game that you like. One of the like key mechanics mechanics of solving the puzzles is there's a lantern. Um, this the main character, I guess. This girl holds it. I guess they're kind of like co-main characters. Yeah, but anyways, not she any individual main she uh, holds this lantern and you like can light it up with light and then you use the light to unlock. That's it's how essentially you, a key. Yeah, and that's how you like at the end of every level you put the light into the final like ending up place like of the shrine level. or whatever. So the whole puzzle is to get the light to the end of the world. But there's these like little robot guys that can hold the 
Lantern two. Yeah, four. So there's there's also things that'll put the light out throughout the level. Right. So like if you pass them when you have the lantern lit up, it will um, it'll take the light away. So you have to backtrack, figure out what you can do uh, to get like past it. Like sometimes you can turn yeah. it off. Sometimes you can you can use one of these robot guides that like jump around that thing. So you put while the lantern walk with the light it. on it on one of these robots, and they'll jump past the thing that'll take it away. That um, sounds like it could be a pain in the ass. It really but isn't. They no. kind of handhold you in at the least first to few. Yeah, it out. In the first few levels, I kept forgetting that like the lantern was a thing that caught the light. So I'd figure out the puzzle and be like, okay, I need that robot guy to jump across at this time mm. when I have this like thing paused in time. And I'd like do that a million times. So I'm like, am I just not getting the hitbox right? Like, what the fuck is going on? And I look it up, and it's just like, oh. I forgot to give it the lantern. Like, I'm just holding it like a jackass. Right, they like you some, missed one of the directions. Like the, yeah. They do some really cool stuff with, uh, the, obviously it's all time-based. They just do some really cool stuff where, like, your one of your characters, one of the things you can interact with will alter time for specific pieces of the environment, but everything else will be paused. So your characters will stay in the same place. The all the lights will, and everything will stay in the same place. But like you can like knock down boxes or something. There's like, like a that. big Jenga at some point that you can yeah, like put Jenga, back together. There's dice uh, or um, dominoes, dominoes not yeah. dice. Uh, there's like a big dinosaur. Uh, I don't know, like skeleton. Yeah. That you can like knock over and put back together. And then like and, that'll make a bridge in one place, but then I'll take it away in another. So you have to like manipulate what part of time uh, the dinosaur yeah, really is cool. in versus yeah. what part of time. You're in. It was really interesting that they did that stuff. And then, like, later in the game, they did a lot of stuff where, like, you just have to wait in a spot for a while. Yeah, there's, like... like something in the background is happening that, like, the, like a piece, like a droplet of water will, f- like, connect an electrical, yeah. like, circuit to power a thing somewhere. So you have to, like, get to the point in time where that water is perfectly... It, and then freeze it. it. And then wait, wait yeah. there for a while. Yeah. Um, I, and yeah, there was no word like it was. It I thought the story was outstanding, and there wasn't like a single word said or written in this game, which yeah, says a lot. The story was the way I put it was it's less dramatic than I expected it to be. Uh, off the, on the offset, I feel like they're kind of setting you up for um, one storyline, and it ends up not being where, at least for me, where I thought it was going. But it was cool. Um, I feel like they do a pretty good job of like. Like Ed said, explaining it without any words. There's no dialogue. There's no like written words in the entire game. It's all just like, kind of through. There's not even really like cut so scenes. kind of like journey environmental storytelling. I mean, there's like like you beat a level and then it'll have like a picture that. It's so, like you'll do a level where you're doing all this like fort building type shit, and then yeah. like it'll have a picture of you. So the game is basically like I'd say you're. Almost a teenager, probably not like 10, 11, 12 years old yeah. or something like that. Like a younger kid. Pre adolescent. And you're two, you're, there's two main characters, a boy and a girl. And uh, the gardens between, like, that's, it's an Australian game. So that's just like what they call backyards for us Americans. So, like, they, they live right next to each other, but the girl is moving away. So, like, it's this telling of, the like, boy moved away. I thought the girl moved away. Oh, well, one of them's moving the fuck away. And, uh, so <laughs> the whole thing for, is uh, about, like, boxes the Bay Club or whatever they're, the other. Packing, they're packing up the right. house and everything it's it, it was really cool if yeah. you like puzzle games i cannot recommend this enough it was a, definitely a unique experience yeah it's definitely a really good it rang home for me because i moved like hundreds of miles when i was 11 so like it was like really so made me relive so that. it's about moving on and kind of growing it's up like, and it's facing like about, it's, it's mostly just about their friendship yeah it's, it's like about like losing a best friend right. at that age like Right, your parents want to move. There's not shit you can do. I feel like Ed's about to start crying. <laughs> it was, it was well, like, it's very relatable it was for you. Yeah, experience for me. Yeah, like I, I got it, and yeah. like it tells it. It definitely keys in on how that feels. Not terribly long, I'm guessing. Right, uh, less than three hours. Yeah. Okay, I think I beat it in like two hours. If you get, if you don't get stuck on any puzzles, it's it's pretty short. Yeah, I guess like it kind of depends. Like you could probably beat that game in an hour if you were like puzzle yeah. master, but. Right. Even if you're terrible at them, it would take like three or four. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you like puzzle games, uh, that's that's one that I wouldn't skip. Yeah, and it's on, like uh, like you said, it's on Games Pass. So like, and I feel like it's a perfect Games Pass game. Like that is why I have that yeah. you service. Think of, like going out and getting yourself. Like but like just because we're doing you. this, and like I've heard. Uh, I didn't even hear of this game before. A few people. Have I don't. Yeah, I hadn't heard of it either. Um, I know. Uh, I think one of the Giant Bomb guys, I don't remember who, like, they were very adamant about 
you should check this game out. It's on Games Pass. You have no excuse not to. And I was like, okay. And then I looked it up and it sounded cool. So, yeah, yeah. it's a good game. I also, um, I'll just jump past. I played through Bastion for the first time because that and uh, that and Transistor are on Switch now. So uh, I was traveling this week and wanted something to play on the Switch. So um, that was one of the games I got and got through. And then I also, for some stupid reason, picked up Skyrim on the Switch. <laughs> played through like probably another 15 hours of that game. And, yeah. yeah, that'll eat up some time. Yeah. I mean, it's not. I, I, I'm not upset that I bought it because it's not a game I'm going to play a lot of right now. But it's a game that like I've played so much that having it on mobile and like having it to jump into on a plane, it's really mindless at this point. But like, plus it's enjoyable. almost infinite amount of content. So yeah, if you exactly. Need it for an hour, you can definitely beat an hour with that game. Right, and, and it's a it's like one of the those games. Uh, Bethesda games are like the easiest for me to like. I could take a year off and just like pick right yeah. back up where I well, started. Especially or left after off you've and... played it for so long like i've beaten this game like three different times yeah. so like i don't need to know where i'm at in the story i like know the story well enough that as soon as i jump in i'm gonna know what i need to do i really don't want to rebuy it and play it on switch because i play i played like the shit out of it on 360 i played it on pc then i played like 100 hours of it on the ps4 version and then i played like another 80 on the xbox one i'm like i really shouldn't spend any more time with skyrim <laughs> at this point in my life that's kind of but where being I was mobile is such a Cool thing. I played it once and that was enough for me. Yeah. Like I've had my, I'm good with Skyrim. I was kind of with you on this one, Ed, but for some reason the thing that kept drawing me in was I have uh, noise canceling headphones that I use when I travel for work. Yeah, and um, I was uh, just really drawn to the idea of like listening to the really epic soundtrack of Skyrim, like with nothing else to say. It is a good me. soundtrack. Yeah. Um, it sounds that, really good. So, like, that's why I was so, like, adamant on picking it up on Switch, and it, it delivered. It's, like, very calming when you're just, like, walking around the environment, and then, like, a wolf will show up, and they just have that, like, that yeah. booming Skyrim epic <laughs> sound. So, um, Full orchestral kicks in. and Yeah. I think it plays really well on the Switch. I think it's a game that caters well towards being mobile because... You can kind of play it however you want uh, because it is, like, a Bethesda game. You can, like, just stick to side quests if you only have a little bit, and it won't right. take very long. And Plus, the dungeons are fairly bite-sized. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I had some fun with it. I'll definitely be going back to it, but uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, like, immediately. Just when I have some time, it's I think it's a great game for that type of uh, gameplay. Yeah, yeah, you have about... Ten more days until games really open up this year. So <laughs> yeah, get it in now. Yeah, now's a good time be, to play stuff. I mean, like Ed said, it's a good game to just jump back into. So like anytime there's right. a lull, yeah. if I'm traveling or something, I can just throw it back on and not worry about yeah, like having to catch up on where I was or anything. Yeah, so, and as good as the soundtrack is, it's a really good like podcast game too, where you can just like play a little bit yeah. while you're like listening to something else or watching. I want I want that to be one of our awards of 2019, the best podcast, podcast yeah. game, <laughs> the best Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a good game. You been playing anything else? Uh, I feel like that's a lot. <laughs> that, is, that is a I lot. Mean, I, I, I played through a lot of bite-sized games, uh, and then started another hundred-hour game that I played three <laughs> times. So yeah, that's that's all I did this week. I beat this Spider-Man uh, DLC, but I'm not gonna say too much because I think George is still playing through it. Yeah, I haven't started the last one yet. It was cool. Anybody else play anything this week? Uh, I got further in Red Dead 2, went back to that. Same. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on Red Dead this week. Yeah, so I'm in Chapter 6 now. Um, Not that much time. Last chapter. <laughs> so, last chapter, I know there's still, like, two or three epilogues to play through after that. There's but, two. Yeah, there's two. Um, yeah, played, got back into that. Not really mainlining the story, I was still doing some side stuff, but really trying to prioritize that more than anything. A lot of stranger missions open up in Chapter 6, which yeah, is and, weird. Yeah, and I'm God damn it, drawn yeah. to those. <laughs> like, I, I keep going back and doing those, and Chapter 6 is a big character development chapter for yeah. Arthur, where it's really the first time you see him kind of open up and change. So having more opportunities to see that is really interesting. So I keep getting drawn to those when they open up. Like, I want to go see... Yeah, the, the way he reacts to people yeah. now, it's a lot different than it was in the previous chapters. Right. Yeah. It, it's the first time you see a huge change in his character. Mm. Um, so it's cool to kind of see how that plays out. 
Um, so I've been drawn to doing those still. Um, I don't know how much longer I have left, but I'm still chipping away at that. Yeah, I'm still in Chapter 3, so I got <laughs> plenty of Red Dead to still play. Uh, I but... think there's eight or nine missions and main missions in Chapter 6 around there. So. They're longer, though. Like, yeah. They're definitely they're more a little drawn out, of, yeah. Most of the missions throughout the game were like 10, 15 minutes mm-hmm. each. I feel like towards the uh, like throughout Chapter 6, the missions are like a half hour apiece. There's yeah, definitely, if I remember right, that's more, what it seemed like. To double me. the riding on horses yeah. with conversation, but it's a lot more conversation. Yeah. It, it it's a lot opinion, more, a lot more intense, dramatic. Like, yeah, uh, I was never when I was playing through Chapter Six, I like could not put the game down. Like it was, where like it well, was but, to the point where like I'd go to work and just be. Thinking about <laughs> well, and then and then the tension with yeah. the posse, like everybody yeah. Yeah. is at each it other's like, throats, and that's why I was so drawn to like playing more of it. I was constantly like, yeah, man, this. This is intense. I care a lot about what's going on. Yeah, a lot of the earlier missions you do really do feel like filler by the end of the game when mm-hmm. you. But it, I think it it fits well with the style of like the storytelling. Yeah, I mean, there's always like it was busy necessary. work for a posse to do. It's obviously. mundane. That's kind yeah. of the point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, like I hated that stuff at first, but now I'm kind of like I feel like I'm understanding what that game is going for now, and now that I've like kind of accepted that, I'm enjoying it a lot more. I mean, it's yeah, still like sure. annoying as shit when I'm trying to just do like this random mission and i feel like i'm really far away from a cart and then my horse just decides to do like a triple flip and i'm like (laughs) fuck man or like i'll accidentally shoot my gun too close to like the quest giver and then they're pissed they're pissed at you so you can't do it for a while like that shit's still really annoying but like the game is really well written and that's starting to be enough to to make me want to keep going that's like a few weeks ago i was dead set on i will not finish this game and now i've kind of like I really want to see it through at this point. So that's definitely like my feelings on the game is that it was so well written that it makes up for like how poorly it plays and uh, <laughs> a lot of that. I don't think it's that bad. I did uh, one thing I did that really helped is when I first started playing um, until like the last couple play sessions, I saw like I don't remember what website had like some like how to change the controls to make Red Dead not feel like shit, and I like did all that, and then. It was, like, still really bad, so I was like, I'm just going to try this the way they intended it to and put it all the, like, default controls, and that's way more, like, if you've played a Red Dead. The only thing I've done was I put on, like, the uh, the thing where you don't have to, like, tap the button. Tap X? I just changed like, it. That's to crazy hold. that that's still the way to... <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. So I changed that to, like, you hold to run really and hold me. to, like, open shit and all that. Like, anytime you'd have to, like, continuously tap A yeah. really fast, or, I mean, I play it on Xbox, but... Anytime yeah. you have to, like, spam the shit out of A, like, now I just hold it. Like, that's the only thing I changed from the default controls, and it, I'm enjoying that. That was a lifesaver. Yeah, yeah, like, it was a real chore to play it. Because I played it, like, I put on some setting where to run, you, like, held in the left stick, like, a Call of Duty game right. style. And that was fine, but then the horse still controlled the way it normally does. Like, you can't do that so option on the horse. To, like, you can't hold so, down... Like, yeah. You can't do the left stick at all, so like I had to go back like I had to switch back and forth from the tap the shit out of A and the hold left stick. And you're moving with the horse ninety percent of that game. Right. So. so then like whenever I got off the horse, I'd pretty much forget how the shit to move Arthur and I'd just be like, <laughs> yeah. Why is he walking so slow? It's like, Oh yeah, there's a run button, I just have to like press three fucking things to do it. Right. So now that I've turned all that garbage off, it's made it a lot more of a like still not doesn't play great, but made it more of an enjoyable experience really the big issue gameplay wise is those menus are horrible yeah, i think that's the part that always got me is like everything you do is like three buttons away yeah like there's almost yeah. nothing that like one button will get you there like running you have to tap a but other than that like you can't even pull your gun with one button right right and none of it feels intuitive yeah. yeah it's all I, like mean, cumbersome point. to switch your weapons pull them out Right. Like, it feels fine once you have your gun out and you can do Deadeye and you can obviously just auto-aim at people. Yeah, the, like, shooting gallery stuff's fine. It's, like, yeah. getting there. I'm to the point where, like, I'm doing these really hard, like, I mean, it's not getting super hard, but, like, there's a lot of times yeah. where you're fighting a bunch of dudes in the streets and stuff. And, like, the, the process of getting the right gun off the horse is so cumbersome <laughs> that I'm, like, I'll just use this fucking pistol. Right, I'll use I don't whatever the default out. that they give I don't, me. I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't use the cattleman revolver. I don't like know how to shoot to switch my gun, game. so I'd yeah. rather just suffer through this town fight. Like, Well, how many times did you forget, too, when you to uh, get off your horse? When you got oh, off your horse, this. and then you just had, yeah. yeah. I think that was a, so I think that was an update later on, because I know early on they make you get 
specific guns off of your horse. There so are some where, like, the guy's yeah. like, hey, uh, you forgot your uh, well, whatever. Well, I know later on when I was playing it, and it might just be in late game, they do it for you, where, like, you get off your horse for a mission, and they just give you two yeah, guns there on your are, back. Yeah, there are certain the missions. that they tell you. There are certain missions But it's that, not like, 100% of the time you yeah. get off your horse. That's, and that's what's really annoying. Yeah. It's right. more, I guess it's not so much the missions. It's, like, when I go do, like, a random thing. Like, they have those, like bandit hideouts yeah. or whatever like i'll go there and i'm just like i'm gonna clear this out it's gonna be sweet and it's like oh i only brought this like pea shooter pistol <laughs> that i have to now kill a hundred du- dudes with and it's just like not fun that, you just made, but it's you better just than, made your own hard mode yeah <laughs> it's better than figuring out how the shit i get the gun off the horse yeah. so it's, it's like rockstar was so just lost in the attention of to detail they put in that they it's, forgot to yeah, it's much more yeah. realistic but it's not good for like uh, as a game quality play. of life right from a gameplay perspective yeah like they made such like this intricate beautiful world i feel like whoever was like the guy that controls your inventory was like well i gotta spice things up a bit <laughs> like these assholes are like i mean making it, it, the like snow cool. look beautiful when you walk through it and shit so like there's no way i could just have one menu i'll have nine menus i'll show <laughs> i'll show cool. that guy i appreciate yeah. that they made it realistic and like you can't just have like 40 guns on you at all times but like from a gameplay perspective, it sucks. Yeah, like, I get why they did it, and I don't know wh- if I would prefer that they didn't do it. I feel like I'd prefer the ability to turn it off. Well, it's just like one of those things where like they made everything so intricate. Like I definitely wouldn't want that game to be like less vibrant. Like I would not trade a lot to make that shit better. Right. Like if they were gonna like tone down the story, or like there's 400 pieces of music that are all different and awesome. Like if, if yeah, it the was music like in that game, yeah. it's like it's if very we scale, good. Yeah. If we definitely scale back the. If we scale back that fucking menu shit, do they scale back all that too? Like, I wouldn't take that trade. Yeah, for sure. Um, other than that, I've been playing the Donkey Kong uh, Mario Rabbids DLC. Oh, how it, is that? I still need it. It's really good. It's really good. Um, Donkey Kong is insanely early. overpowered. <laughs> He's like the best character in the whole game. <laughs> nice. It makes it easier. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, the game's a lot harder though, too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like about the same as the last chapter. Yeah. Throughout the it, whole DLC, but Donkey Kong is so much stronger. It's strange because it, you have to have at least beaten the first world to play it, but I don't think you'd be equipped to do I don't most of it know. unless you had beaten the game already. Um, it kind of sucks because you, if I remember right, you don't get your whole party. You get no. like only three characters, so right? You get um, you get Rabbit Kong, Peach, Rabbit Peach, and and Cranky Rabbit Kong, right? So throughout the whole DLC, yeah. So you have yeah. one party. I feel like that simplifies things a little bit, which is kind of nice. Like I was over overwhelmed. I was always overwhelmed in the base game of like, all right, am I bringing the right dudes to this? battle and am yeah I but you can yeah. get i mean you level everybody up throughout the game at the same time and you like coins i think everybody can use individually um so like leveling up it shouldn't have been yeah it's not like you have to grind characters right out, no. but like plus you can respec everybody right which helps but um i don't know like rabid peach i never used in the main game because her play style just doesn't fit the way i was playing that game so it was kind of hard to like reset that mindset. She's like, definitely a support character. She can right. heal up your whole party. She can uh, use a bubble that gives her thirty percent less damage when she gets hit, um, and she just uses the standard blaster with um, the remote control bomb. Yeah, Donkey Kong has uh, a banana. Banana. That throw that's that'll a hit boomerang. A bunch of people. Right. It'll hit multiple enemies, or he has a ground pound attack that does a lot of damage. Uh, also, he has some added. Uh, mobility features where he can get up to higher ground and there's certain points where it'll yeah, show like climb a, anything in the game yeah and it'll show this little ramp with like dk on it and you can swing from higher platform to higher platform so he has just a ton of mobility he can get completely around the map in one turn and right. then attack so he's really strong uh the cranky he can also throw good guys and enemies yeah like pretty far and when he when you throw an enemy, it'll do additional damage. And then obviously the when you throw your people, um, they do additional ground damage as well. So like if you throw Cranky Kong, he shoots like a shotgun at the ground before he lands, and it'll hit like a bunch of people. Yeah, he's also phone, so. kind of um, he has a more long range attack. He has like almost a sniper, but also it can launch barrels that are kind of like. Uh, explosive where cranky yeah cranky so he can do like more 
long distance stuff. He's a little more of a glass cannon. He doesn't have as much HP as the other characters, but I like that. Um, I've been having a lot of fun with it though. I think it's definitely on par with the rest of the game. The world itself, the like uh, Tropical Freeze, Donkey Kong world looks really good and has the same kind of puzzles and everything you'd expect from an additional world in Mario Rabbids, but I, I'm i not really far. I think I've beat the first like five levels or so, but um, I've been having a lot of fun with it, and I think it's yeah definitely worth your time if you liked that game to go it's back and get that. It's just more of that game. Which how, how much does it cost? I think it's, like it's $20, 15, it $20. Oh, that's not bad. I wondered if they kind of did like a... This is like a substantial thing. It's gonna be forty damn dollars. No, 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 it's, it's, it's definitely a fifteen to twenty dollar price. Oh, okay. ah, that's that sounds like something I'll probably pick up. It sounds. I recommend. You know, it. I really like the base game, so I w- I'd love to go back. And I play still some need more to there. finish that. I think it's tough. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, last I definitely hit a wall. Last boss definitely took me a while to get through. Um, last world even has some really tough levels. Yeah, everything it. gets hard at that. I'd yeah. probably replay that game at some point. That whole game is awesome. I wonder if you go back and replay the game now, do you get to use Donkey Kong like with the rest of your party? That'd be interesting. Game? That'd be like a fun little new game plus. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would definitely have him in my crew. Right. Is there like a hard... I don't remember much about that game. Is there like a hard mode? I think it's just the standard mode and then, and you then easy, mode. easy mode on <laughs> yeah. each fight. I don't know if they I remember the easy They mode. might have added a... Like a new game plus A new game plus, plus style might have of... some kind of extra difficulty. Do they have I don't an remember. actual new game plus? I think I don't you think can. So. I think you can replay levels. I think it's just basically you can go back to whatever world you want and replay and levels, just like and you have all your stuff. And yeah, yeah. And, I, and like with new abilities, you can unlock new secrets or whatever. Right. There's also the you can go back to all the worlds and find all the golden weapons. There's um, those extra hidden levels. Like each world has at least one secret yeah. level There's that's usually fairly that difficult. Like it's a higher difficulty than the other ones. So probably going back with all your end game stuff would make those not as hard. It's definitely a game that I'd revisit maybe, like, next year I'd, or I'd love or if like they came out with another one. I'd, that'd be... That was one of my favorite games. That's my favorite thing that Ubisoft's done <laughs> in a while. Yeah, I mean, I it was so unique and different and not at all a Ubisoft game. It wasn't, like, open world for them. It was pretty They did something just, different. Like, and, and with it partnering was, up was, with Nintendo, it's yeah. so <laughs> fucking bizarre. It was a bizarre well, thing yeah. that it even got made. Yeah. I think somebody... I think George was telling me, like, the way it got made is... Uh, some guy just like made a couple levels of it and took it to Nintendo and was like, I want to make this. And they were like, holy shit, like this <laughs> looks really good. Like you've done a good job with all of our characters. Yeah, they were like, like well, how did you get like it. our assets? Like, how did you get the Mario asset? And he was like, oh, no, I made that. Like I went in and did all that. And they were like, that attention to detail is unheard of. Because right. normally only we can do Mario. Like, OK. <laughs> it's like the uh, Sonic Mania story. Yeah. That guy was just like a huge Sonic fan and made a game and was like, hey, uh, <laughs> Can we, like, release this? And they're like, shit, yeah, man. Like, if you want to get into, like, this game made me want to play games like XCOM. Like, yeah. It's yeah. an entry level for that. It really it's is. definitely the first, like, yeah. real, for, like, the, tactical. The RTS. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was it's sort of like yeah. an, it's like a tactical. It's that grid style, like, yeah. strategy puzzle game. Uh, kind of like uh, other games like that that are on Switch, Into the Breach. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I probably would not have played Into the Breach if it also, wasn't for Mario V. Rabbids. Yeah, I think there's also, there's like a few more, but I can't think of them right now that's the only one i've played and then like i've gone back and played xcom 2 and i mean those games definitely way can amp up the difficulty yeah they have permadeath you yeah. can try that uh, shit but there is yeah. there are permadeath options yeah. so if you lose a character he's completely Toast. gone and you're like well i put 30 hours into that guy right so. you know, it's a, yeah those games are tough but yeah i would not i probably wouldn't play any of them if it wasn't for this game yeah, it's a great intro to the series. It's taking characters that we all have some sort of emotional connection to. Right. And it changes them up. The it's just such a weird cool. damn thing that it's they so made. It's so weird, the, and it's even weirder that it worked. Yeah. The, the rabid versions are cool, too. Like, each character yeah, is unique. Yeah, expect those to be like, I will never use a rabid character. But I don't they're essential. about yeah, the rabbits, yeah. but you play with them. Well, you have to use them in the game. You have to have at least, you have one, to have at least one and, one and at party. least one Mario. It did, yeah. it did a good job of, like making me want to try everybody out yeah like most of the time i just like in a fighting game or whatever i'll just like pick my guy and that's yeah. it yeah but this game like made me want to try out Well, because everybody was so different, different even stuff. characters of the same classes had like a different secondary weapon that completely yeah. changes how you right. play with them like if they have a ground pound versus a grenade like yeah you have to play with them very differently you have to, to be like them. aggressive and up close and yeah, yeah, I had great. basically one team that I used through the majority of the game. I think it was Luigi, Mario, and maybe Rabbit Peach were, I think, my main crew. But on the final boss, actually, I had to switch it up and use Yoshi 
with. I think you have to use Mario. I think Mario's yeah. Always so in the game. I used Mario, Yoshi, and I think that must have been some other support character. Some rabid, some other rabid, rabid, yeah, something. rabid something. <laughs> but like, I hadn't used Yoshi for more than like one level. But then well, went Yoshi through. Yoshi was a really late addition. You get him in World Four. Yeah. But he also had like the most different weapon set. Like he had like a machine gun. Yeah, he had a chain gun. He had a ton of mobility. <laughs> that you could like amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's like the crazy thing about this game. It's like. Uh, Mario, the face of Nintendo, and they're like these little cutesy characters, and they've always been these platformers. No, and yeah. you like jump on guys' heads normally, and it's just like, what if we gave them a freaking pistol? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. pistol well, it's like somebody. Uh, has, yeah, like, we a gave Mario a Mega Man <laughs> blaster, and he's gonna go through here and beat the shit out of everyone. And what if it really worked yeah. well? And but what? But what if it was in this like grid-based puzzle uh, <laughs> strategy game that also had like. The weird rabbits from Raymond yeah. lore. It's really shocking that Nintendo like, gave it. their approval on this. Really. Yeah, whoever's like uh, in charge of that kind of stuff now at Nintendo seems yeah. to be doing a bang up job because, like, uh, if well, the you game look sold at well. Smash Bros. Yeah, I mean, now we they're like, well, I mean, it was a putting stuff. It was in. also a pretty early Switch release when like right. yeah. they hadn't really released. That was of... really smart too. It was like, well, this is a weird game that probably no one would play, but like but right Mario now people it. are so thirsty for Switch titles that they'll buy goddamn anything. Plus, it has all the Nintendo characters in it, so that's probably like that game could have been hot garbage, yeah, and we all still would have like, bought it and played it. That's well, true. I I probably wouldn't have because I got a Switch pretty late, and I remember texting you, uh, Ed and George, and was like, "Should I get a Switch?" And both of you were like, uh, "Yeah." <laughs> and then I was like, "What game should I get?" And like, I think Ed said I should buy Breath of the Wild a second time. And George was like, yeah. Mario Rabbids is really cool. You should probably give that a shot. And I was like, that seems like something I wouldn't like. I'll give it a shot. Cause I'm like, like, yeah, it's good, but Breath of the Wild the second time sounds pretty good. <laughs> All right. Anything also, else? Uh, We've been playing. You beat Dark Souls since the last time we talked, too, right? Yeah, I beat Dark Souls. Um, Content. Yeah, went through, did all the DLC, finished up. I don't know if I'm going to do a New Game Plus run, but... I'm probably yeah. going to steal it from you before then and play through it. Yeah, I mean, I still love that game. It's still a 10 out of 10 to me. Real to me, damn it. But Still real to me, man. <laughs> I still need to finish that game. Um, yeah, that's really good. You got something to say, Andy? You, you like Dark Souls? <laughs> Other than I that... I just going to knock over your mic. <laughs> I think that... He's heard enough. Most, mostly what I've been playing, just chipping up away at Red Dead and trying out that DLC, which has been... a t- a lot of fun for yeah, me. Yeah, Red really Dead's getting you got daunting. This DLC so late. I know. I, I think it was just like I was so crowded with all this stuff I wanted to play, and I was like, I, you know, I already beat that game, so the DLC isn't really number one on my priority list right now. But um, it's I, my New Year's re- resolution to check out more DLC. I haven't so played I a lot of DLC this yeah, year. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something I'd really like, but it's just one of those things where I'm like DLC. Uh. No, it's it definitely has like the same level of polish and quality as rough. any world. That's always the issue. Is is it going to have that same level of polish? It's, it definitely. Yeah. Does. It's yeah. kind of rough because like that game is so tactical that I feel like going back to it six months later. To play the DLC, you have to like learn it again. Yeah, yeah. And it's so like you have to be in a mindset. That's my problem with most. That's what I, you would Ed would just start the game all over again. (laughs) He would play the DLC. Like if I play that Spider Man DLC, I just beat Spider Man like a week ago, but I'm gonna fucking start it over so I can like play through it all and play the DLC when it's hits or whatever. And then you played so much of the base game, you're like, okay, I gotta take a break from this shit now. Yeah, you never even there's a lot of burnout factor there. I don't. I'm bad at. Like, like you're like a completionist. I'm bad you at video re- game. Video game scheduling is not my strong yeah. suit. <laughs> no, I, I could fall into that hole too for sure. Or you've been playing Scoot. So primarily, I've been playing Tetris Effect. Oh, which I really I, need to get that. I also discovered something about me and everybody else <laughs> that I know. Apparently, I'm the only person in the world that has never played Tetris before Ever? until this game. Uh, I'm glad you're rectifying it because it's <laughs> one of the best games of all time. Yeah, everybody thinks I'm a crazy asshole for never. Not like, even like a phone version. Nope, or... I have never played. <laughs> like I didn't even know what the objective was. What? I was playing Tetris <laughs> Effect in VR. I after we recorded the podcast last Sunday, I, I bought it. Forty dollars is a bit steep, I would say, for, for the Tetris. Yeah. I mean, you get a shit ton of content. Yeah, like the, the effect modes are there, there's a ton of different new modes they added in. But yeah, just playing base Tetris, I was like, what am I even supposed to be doing here? Because the only like, like, where are the colors? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So I've only played like Doctor Mario or like even like a Poyo Poyo Tetris, which is like matching. That's the, like a tile based game. Yeah, stuff, yeah. Like I didn't even know Tetris was. 
just like a simple, you just match you gotta horizontal get those, lines. You got to get those, yeah, yeah. get those lines going. So I'm playing the journey mode, and I'm playing on beginner mode yeah. because I had never played fucking Tetris before. Like, okay, I can pick this up. It took me about an hour before I could even beat the first fucking <laughs> stage because yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I really want to pick that game up. That's but, on, uh, on my list for our sec- or later segment of the show. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Like the audio and visual Do you need stuff. a VR to play it? No, no. it's not... And VR doesn't even enhance it that much. I mean, it's it's cool to play in VR, but you can have just as good a time. In, and, it, and it runs on, a, it has HDR, so it looks great on a 4K TV. Yeah. Um, that's, what, that's what I've been hearing. I, I need to play that game. I love Tetris. And- yeah, there's a shit ton of different modes, too. The only weird thing is there's no, like, competitive mode because the game's theme is more about, like... It's like reflective right. and being medit like almost having like this meditative yeah, it's almost quality like to it. Zen state yeah, it. yeah, exactly. And the music definitely attributes to that. Like it's the music is really good. Uh and then like all the visual stuff is really cool, but sometimes when you're just in the Tetris zone, it gets like distracting. It gets really distracting. Yeah, I've heard that a bit. But yeah, it's really satisfied. Like I wouldn't say I'm a Tetris master by any means now, but I can at least go through like the journey mode on normal now and not and die not die on the first run. Yeah. So yeah, I would recommend it. I recommend we'd all check it out, especially in, well, the VR mode is is good, but it's also distracting. Like, if you just want to hone in and play Tetris, it, it oddly kind of distracts you from that. Yeah, I feel but... like you have less, like, I don't know what I'd call fidelity, maybe. I don't know. Like, you have yeah. less, like, agency of what the fuck's going on when you're mm. that immersed. Like, it's like a thing where if you sit too close to the TV while playing games, you get, like, inherently a lot worse at them but it feels really really satisfying too if you just like hit a tetris and you're just like knocking down lines Is one by one getting a tetris. <laughs> i've never heard that. getting a tetris i've yeah. never heard that like as a noun like or, uh, i've, ne- I've never i've never i've never heard tetris as a verb before but i really like it tetrising I what do you do it tonight all, tetris all night long tetris i thought it was whole just like level. getting the lines in tetris i thought tetris was just the game not like any like in-game I, I mean, that. like that game. Well, this is te- very... this is the Tetris effect. <laughs> yeah, this is the most Tetris Tetris. Oh yeah, I got Tetris that. and the most Tetris. I would Tetris. say yeah, they come very close to justifying that forty dollar price tag because there are so many different kinds of modes. Like there's combo modes. There's uh, ones where you have to find the exact perfect uh, shape of the block coming down to. It's called like clearing the lines. Where there's only one right answer, and you have to do that as fast as possible. They give you like a minute that to do really it. Cool. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I, but, I heard too, like when you finish that journey mode, you unlock a mode where you play through it all like not levelized. It's just like you play through the entire like two hour. Jer- yeah, mode. it's it, yeah. The journey mode itself is not terribly long, but yeah, it's definitely primed for like almost marathon sessions where you just you know get, get in into the, the zone. zone. Yeah, get in the zone, get in the Tetris zone. Uh, yeah, other than that, I've been playing a little more Hitman. Uh, going... I'm glad you're sticking with that. I, yeah. I want to. I need to get Yeah, to I that. would definitely recommend returning to some of the better maps, like the, the billionaire map at the end. is. Do you do the uh, Flamingo, and I don't know what level it's in, but the Flamingo. Oh, ending. when you fly. When you fly away. Yeah. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but uh, yeah, that's in the Miami map. Miami, yeah. I'm looking right. forward to going back to that. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Ed was telling me about that, and I feel like I remember seeing the Flamingo. He's in, like, one of the underpasses. I got, I, I got the costume, but, yeah, the Easter egg is fucking ridiculous. Once you finish the, yeah. you have to go to, like, a certain exit mm-hmm. in the suit. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just so when you complete a map, your mastery level goes up, and depending on how high it is, you unlock different, uh, like, starting, like starting locations, items. and you can smuggle in certain items, and you add, like, you get, like, a rubber duck, which you could just, like, throw down and then fucking detonate. <laughs> Indy's just biting the <laughs> shit out of George right now. Yeah, Indy doesn't like this. Our, our mascot. We should put pictures of Indy up on the site. Yeah. <laughs> oh. He's got to get his own page. <laughs> Uh, you might play it anything else? Hitman two. Uh, oh yeah, no, I picked up the London Heist on PlayStation VR. What's that? Oh. It's a uh, it's part of this uh, bundle package called PlayStation VR Worlds, but it's it reviewed pretty mediocre. But London Heist was like the one thing that people out of it really that liked. people liked. Uh, it's mostly just a shooting gallery, but it's it's very satisfying with your move controllers to shoot a gun and then. 
So with your one hand, you you have a handgun, and then the other hand, you can like reload. You actually put the magazine like into, into the, the into the chamber, and you Perfect. hear a click, and that's very satisfying. Yeah, that sounds so, uh, really cool. Yeah, it's only an hour experience, but that's, uh, that's it's on a, sale for five ideal. bucks right now. So yeah, it's, it's definitely like a very good early, almost like tech demo. Cool for play for VR. Nice. Yeah, I don't have. I, I feel uh, like, that's about. I well, I played Resident Evil Two the demo. Yeah, but, that was. A, yeah, that's the thing I was gonna have to yeah. talk about for the most part because like yeah, I played Guardians Between, but we definitely already talked about that, and I played a lot of Red Dead. <laughs> Um, the only other thing besides Resident Evil 2, which I guess we'll, we'll get to that in a second, is uh, I started, I think it's called Gris or Grease or Gris, I don't know. Doesn't pronunciation. Yeah. Uh, is it only on Switch? I think it's on PC as well. Okay. Um, came out at some point last year. And that is very much, like, it's been compared to, uh, like, a 2D journey, and I get that a lot. Uh, is it a difficult Game? Like what's the no? There's gameplay? there's no fail states. There's a, I mean it's like a puzzle platformer. Okay. Um, and like you I'm get you get abilities that. and I like journeys. with with Journey those. So like every like there's like not levels. It's like it's continuous, but there are sections. So like you'll get like blocked off to go back at a certain point. And with each of those comes like some new ability. So like the first one you get is like you can turn into like this heavy box. And then with that, you can, like, weigh stuff down in the environment to solve puzzles. Or there's this wind mechanic that, like, it'll like uh, early in the game when the wind comes, it just knocks you the shit over and sends you flying back. So, like, there's sections you can't get to. But then when you beca- can become the block, like, you, like, go into the wind and you become the block. And then when it passes, you can keep walking. And then, like, you don't lose your progress. And they so do it's stuff like, like that. A Metroidvania in that sense, where you have new powers, you can go. You can't go back. Pass. You can't go back though. So okay. like, there's not like shit you missed that you mm-hmm. can go back and check out. But yeah, it'll but it's like, like your new abilities new... unlock new pathways, basically. Right. But like, there weren't any pathways you missed. It was just mm-hmm. like, now you need a double jump, so we're gonna give okay. you a double jump. What did you play it on Switch? Switch? Um, it's seventeen dollars. So, you know, that's a weird price tag. Normal price point. <laughs> um, I I haven't played through all of it yet. I I think my one complaint, I guess not complaint, but like. That game's probably I don't I don't know I'm guessing like five hours long. Uh, it doesn't need to be that long. Like the wind thing I was talking about early on in the game, like it'll just blow you off, and like the first like twenty times it happens, you don't have any way to counter it. It's just like part of the game, and it was really cool two times. But those <laughs> next eighteen, it was just like oh, mm. shit. Now I gotta wait thirty seconds, and there's been like some weird uh, stuff in the game where you control stuff where. Uh, like, uh, if you're holding left, like or holding right, like, I'm going to move after this wind thing goes away and I can get up. But I started holding it too early, so then, like, the character doesn't do anything. You have to, like, let go and do it again. And just, like, I, little annoying shit like that. That's one of those really annoying things that in games... I know exactly what you're talking about, because that pisses me off in every game where that's the case. Yeah, like, well, I like, don't know why. you start an action uh, mid, like, not cutscene, but, like, character animation... It doesn't pick up until you start it again. Right, after like you have to like, start and stop. Right, but it's, and a, it's irritating because it's like you you obviously know what right. you're intending and you understand what to do, but it's if it won't cooperate with you, that's when it gets irritating. Right, uh, but definitely the selling point of that game is it's really cool to look look at. Like it's a you, it looks like a uh, watercolor painting, and the like kind of gimmick of the game is at first it's only like kind of gray tones and like uh, maybe like a yellowish I guess like paper color, um, like and then sepia. like. Every, like, like as you progress through the game, you, like, gather this light, and you take it to a place, and then you'll unlock a new color. And then, like, that changes how you can interact with the world, but it also, like, just looks a lot nicer. So, like, the first one you get is red, and now all of a sudden it's, like, sepia gray plus red. That's cool. And then you get the green. Like, I've gotten red, green, and, like, now, because of green, there's, like, boxes that weren't there before that you can jump on and shit like that. So, like, they do some pretty cool... And it's got, like, a lot of personality you play as, like, this... uh, I mean, it kind of looks like a Journey character. I mean, she has a face and, like, hair and stuff, but it's like a... Does she have a scarf? This floaty... (laughs) She wears, like, this big floaty... (laughs) Big floaty dress thing that kind of reminds me of that. Yeah. And, like, at one point, uh, they do some cool stuff with puzzles. There's, like, this little kid whose head is just a square, but he, like, follows you around because you give him a square apple at some point. And then, like, you'll do things like he jumps when you jump, but he's, like, a little bit behind you, so there will be times where, like, you have to get him to jump and you jump at the same... So, like... Synchronous. There's, like, yeah. some platforming that he has to do, so, like, you're not really doing anything, but you're, like, jumping and moving 
uh, on the other side looking like an idiot so that he gets to where he needs to go. So it is a bit of a puzzle platformer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's definitely puzzles. I mean, nothing like uh, in turn, you know, just because I played it as well this week. It's a, so far, it's a much, much easier, like, straightforward thing so than the, the spaces e- between. It's more about or the gardens between. <laughs> space between. That, uh, is that a Dave Valencia Matthews show? show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gardens between. Yeah, it's much more of just like a relaxing, like, here's this cool thing to look at. This music's really good. Uh, you will, like, interact with the environment. And we there played are... a, it seems like we played a ton of atmospheric stuff this week, Yeah, which is cool. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's kind of like a good time to catch up on all these like bite-sized things that we missed mm-hmm. from right. last year. Yeah. I'm probably gonna throw Gris on my list for like to play this week. Um, throw Gris on my list. Is it Gris? <laughs> I I it? think Let's it's Gris. Gris. I don't know. It's G R I S for those of you listening. I I it's, don't know what the hell. It, it's Gree, man. The S is silent. <laughs> is it, also, it might be. It's, I don't know. I have I have no clue who developed it or anything. No I don't know much about it. Dialogue, no words. Oh, yeah, on the yeah. There's nothing going nothing going on there. It's just. Atmospheric. Maybe with a twenty dollar price tag, they could get in some voice <laughs> acting. But yeah, yeah. Like three <laughs> bucks, right? Yeah, it's sixteen ninety nine. You know, it lets you in on the secret. It yeah. kind of like has a like that. Not all of it, but like the uh, little box head boy thing ended up like he, he goes away and then you find him later and, it, and where you find him and he, he has like a little civilization. It kind of remind me of uh, some like uh, near automata stuff. Well, like, you sold me. Like he's, <laughs> like it's like this. Uh, He's in this like underground village of other robot things, but he's the only one with the box head. They're all like spherical and cone shaped for some reason. Yeah, that's very like Pascal. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a cool game. But then yes, R E two demo, one shot, whatever the hell they call that Oof. thing. Weird thing to do in this day and age to have a demo right because that's 30 minute time capped you can't finish it if you're not good at i didn't finish it i tried it on xbox and playstation I did well not is there finish. is there a finish state there is a get done mode yeah that i'd love to see but i couldn't i mean we have two shots i figured we'd give it a shot today as like a yeah we might maybe. we might record a video of that yeah uh, but anyways, I I, th- I think it looks really good. It plays really like I'm really excited for that game now. It definitely throw out, throw out everything you know about the original game because this <laughs> is completely different. Like they they changed up so much of the rooms that I yeah it's I mean it definitely of... looked familiar to me. But the the way like items are set up now and even the puzzles are completely the way different. you interact with the it's world. Like the way you interact basically rebuilt from the ground up right. It's... And and now that you're over the shoulder and it's no more. Uh, like the static camera angles yeah. and isometric, like it is completely new to me. Yeah, it's but, but that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, I like playing through. I mean, it was. Uh, I think it's like. I mean, the, the reason I didn't finish it because I didn't know where any. Of the, it's still very much. It's weird because it looks and feels like a brand new thing, but it then like the way you play the game, like your objectives feel very early nineties, I guess, or mid nineties. Yeah, and like they, and go they, get these three sphere things to plug into this to unlock the door. There's even elements of that in RE7. Yeah, there's parts. I mean, it's yeah. very Resident Evil. Like, go get right. these pieces and put them in this thing to move forward. And they modernize it. They tell you like, you're okay. Your next objective is uh, find the three medallions. Right. So at least you know. Yeah, like, they, they what to do next. They definitely hold your hand a little more than yeah. that game originally did, but. But they brought back the I can't believe this the typewriter save system. Yeah, and ribbons or no? Yeah, well, in the demo they locked out probably because they don't want you they you can't save and they disabled mm-hmm. the save function. But there are uh, typewriters there, and there's like a if you go up to it, there's like a like a no smoking sign next. Like you can't save here. So I'm guessing they're gonna add ink ribbons into the main game. I don't know if it's gonna be like an infinite infinite type thing like right. an RE4 where you could just save at a typewriter wherever. And they also brought back the storage boxes too. Oh yeah. So you have a limited inventory. Yeah. It seems a lot bigger than like Do you have a right. E2 originally? But was. and I also found like a, a pouch that uh I don't remember what they called it, but it added like two extra slots yeah. to my inventory. It which, was nice too because so they like had a, like quality life stuff. Like RE4 or you, uh well you start with eight. You get eight slots. Eight and grit, it's, like a grid. Yeah, eight system. grids. And yeah. it's not like RE4 where you can kind of manipulate it like a puzzle, uh-huh. like kind of like Tetris almost. Right. Uh this is more just one item takes up one spot. Yeah, and it's okay. nice because like if you pick up ammo that you already have that ammo type, it just like automatically adds it to okay. that slot rather than like old school like now you have two of them and now you gotta combine right. them and now you gotta you it's like, just like yeah. do you want to like combine them like ammo. yeah no shit right it's like <laughs> yeah. eight ammo in one spot and, and then two ammo yeah in the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, like what a mess i mean yeah. i think you technically can do that if you for some if you're a crazy person yeah, if you're an asshole you can do that <laughs> but like you don't have to 
You run out of space really quickly, though. Yeah, if I ran out of space up. in my first playthrough. Uh, but yeah, it's creepy. It's it very intense very too, good. and it's very atmospheric. Like a lot of the, a lot of the station doesn't have power, so you have to use your flashlight, flashlight a lot of the time. And you like half the time you don't even know where you're going. You're very disoriented. I'm sure the maps, because you do pick up a map eventually, that helps yeah, out that a lot. Yeah, that helped a lot. And it does show you on the map. Like it, I think RE Seven did this as well. It lets you know if you've hundred percent in a room, so to speak. You've picked up all the items okay. in there, so. That's that's good that you're not always just kind of like, what am I supposed to do right. next? Is there something yeah, else right. in this room I have to move or right. manipulate? Or is there ammo hidden here or something? Right. There's yeah. one that I want to try out. I haven't got the demo yet. Um, not because like I don't want to play it. I just haven't really had the time to get through it yet when I've been playing mostly Red Dead. But uh, I do definitely want to check that out. Yeah, it's cool. It made, yeah, I mean, I was already pretty excited for this game, but that put me over the top. Like, I'm ready to play that game now. I can't wait. Yeah, the, later this month. Two weeks, weeks or away. whatever yep. until that comes out. Is that the beginning of the game? I I, I never honestly played. The There's RE2. about 20 minutes before when so you're running. Like outside. You're you outside. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, this looks familiar, but a couple times I tried RE2. I, like, got that far mm -hmm. <laughs> and just stopped there. But yeah, so that's what we've been playing lately. I cover everything. Very so. diverse. Well, we want to do sure. some that's quick, what we want. <laughs> quick news and then take a break. I, I don't think we need to go through like everything that's happened in the world of games. Not a lot has happened. I think but, the uh, biggest. I think the biggest thing is definitely the Bungie. Yeah, I'd say the Bungie separating from Activision in terms of uh, Destiny. Yeah, good for them. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I've seen like some takes that this is not this like is a bad sign for Destiny because like Activision legally had like the rights and if they're walking away i, I think they, they don't like it's good they're gonna be some suing i think it was definitely or, very i don't think there's gonna be any like litigation but there's definitely like if activision doesn't believe in this franchise then like maybe well i think activision has been like this for a while where they're very money driven yeah. so destiny 2 not having a huge player base people picked it up and then dropped off very quickly mm -hmm. i think it hasn't been making money for a while. I mean, even they're releasing big expansions for it. They're saying, yeah. everything's cool now. We're updating all this stuff, and people feel so burned on it originally. They just don't want to come back to it. Right. So I think if it hasn't been making money, Activision's just like, well, it's your kid. Take it, I guess. Yeah. Well, I know, like, all those, like, updates and stuff, like, the constant release of new, uh, like, story stuff was kind of like activision's brainchild like they're like we need to release this like dollar amount worth of content right. every few and like bungie was just like we we can't put out good shit you can't write a good story in two months right like, it's just not gonna happen not so that a lot of the original uh, oh, not Destiny that, not that, like, story was a, that some great <laughs> beloved tale but like i feel like they could whether they just like expand on destiny 2 or make a destiny 3 now i feel like i'm really excited for what comes next that's how i feel i do think yeah. it's definitely good i think it's good for the game to have bungie be back at the full control of it and being able to completely dictate how their game content is released what the content is and yeah I, I feel like it's just got to feel good for the people that have been there so long because they like had those issues with microsoft back in the day right. and then, then so they were they're finally activated. untethered yeah right. yeah that was what <laughs> Well, it, it switched to Activision when they left, uh, like, Halo. Yep. And then they, Destiny was going to be their brainchild. Like, that was, like, this is what we've wanted to do for a long time. Well, it's going to be and a 10-year plan, yeah. Yeah, and then Activision it was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be a 10-year plan, and you're going to release shit every day. <laughs> right. Motherfuckers. So it'll be exciting for them to, like, because I'm sure they have enough of a fan base now that they're going to be able to do what they want, and it'll sell enough for them to keep doing yeah. it. Yeah. You mean Bungie having Bungie, the yeah, fan, Bungie, ba fan like, base, yeah. Their own thing now. I definitely saw a lot of positive feedback about it on Twitter. People saying, wow, I can finally play Destiny 2 now that I know that content's going to be of a higher quality or I know Activision's not going to stick their nose in it. And so I think there is at least now or soon, maybe once Bungie kind of comes out and says the first changes they're making or... Do you think they're going to continue Destiny 2 and like supporting that or do you think they're going to say like, that was the Activision thing. We're going to do, like, maybe not even Destiny, but maybe, like, we're going to do our own thing. It's going to be coming out in next year or two years from now and, like, have their own, like, Bungie I I think they got to stick with the I, I think they're going to stick with Destiny like because they have so much. They're so expensive to make. They have so many assets invested in like that's Destiny. Why they, yeah. That's why they couldn't do it on their own because Destiny was a $500 million game right. to make. So, like, 
to make that Plus thing servers for being completely right, online. Right. And, and now, now they can just iterate on that it's with a known what they have established. Like they're yeah. gonna sell copies of Destiny Next, whatever that yeah. is. Uh, just but on namesake I, I alone. I think what they're gonna do is maybe do their own new expansion or new drop of Destiny Two Year Two or something, okay. where they have their own. These are all the updates we made. These are the changes. This is the new content. Maybe change up some kind of... What's already been there. Yeah, maybe adjust the leveling system in some way or just kind of make a few quality of life changes in some capacity and just kind of say, this is what we're planning. This is kind of what it's going to be like going forward. And then once they kind of get people back on board, maybe start working on the next one. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, there is a three-year gap between Destiny 1 and 2, so... But there was a yeah. really steady stream of huge content Yeah, drops. that's true. Yeah, and I think, like, the new, like, upcoming content doesn't have story stuff, so, like, they're already moving away. Like, I feel like that's a move in the right direction. Like, yeah, you got to release regular content for, like, an MMO or Shared World or whatever shit you call that game. But uh, and not all of it has to be, like, story, especially when you can't pump out. Right, like, it, if you back matters. off and... Or maybe even, like, don't do any more story for this and do, like, a Destiny 3. I don't know. but uh, Even if it was just new Nightfall level. Right. Call the boss whatever the fuck you want to call it. No yeah. one cares, really. <laughs> you could just kind of... Yeah, who gives a shit? Yeah. You this can just add... Hysterious. Yeah. You gotta get into his lair. It's <laughs> not a bad title. This him. is Omnigal 2. <laughs> I mean... I'm always looking for work, uh, Bungie. I'm not sure you're on a hiring freeze right now, but... I can write some uh, stupid lore for you. Yeah, we'll but get I think the it, Grimoire cards out and <laughs> go to town. I think it's definitely important, though, for them to kind of come back pretty hard with how they're rebranding it, what changes they're going to make. Yeah, even if they just, like, release like, a YouTube video or Something, a statement I mean, of some sort, be some like, this is our vision now. New that patch we... with patch notes that say this are, these are the plans, right. this is what we're doing. I think they need to do something bigger than patch notes because who's going to check patch notes? Yeah, I think they need to do something for, like, the people that like Destiny but aren't playing it now. Yeah. So I, I think, like, any in-game stuff would kind of be lost. So, like, mostly all of us. Because we all played Destiny yeah. 2 and dropped off I, I really quick. like Destiny 1. I played the main story of Destiny 2 twice with, two like, two different characters. Yeah, I leveled yeah. up three characters all the way. And then, like, never played anything beyond that. Like, yeah. I had fun leveling up a character and, like, seeing what new shit they added, and that was it. Good podcast game. Yeah, yeah. it is. That's up for 2000. <laughs> what year did that come out? 15, 16? 2019, 2017 podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And then the only thing, other thing I have on my list, and I think I just put this down because on our Q1 preview, we talked about the date so much. Uh, Dead or Alive 6 got delayed a couple weeks, which I think, I don't know. It sounds like that game's not finished, so... To give it well, a little, they just released that beta this weekend, yeah, so depending so on how it, that goes. Give it a little more time to kind of work out any kinks and all that and get away from that, that treacherous release yeah. day. Or, I feel like releasing on the same day as like another fighter and three other pretty big, not like huge, but pretty big games. Games at least have some clout. Games them. that all sell millions of copies. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, you got to get out Nothing of Nothing to sneeze at for sure. Right. Yeah. I think that does it for news. You guys want to take a quick break? Come Sounds back good. with our cleanup of 2018 yeah. games we want to play. All right. All right. So now we're going to do something we, I guess we're calling cleanup crew. Uh, talk through our 2018 games we didn't quite get to yet, but definitely games we want to spend. Uh, some of mine are like games I want to spend more time with. And, you know, we talked a lot about Red Dead Redemption 2 already, so I won't beat it one over the head with that. But that is a game now that I'm like dead set on finishing. Um, so that's up there for me. Um, another game, I have one other game that I started that I'm really pumped on, and that game is Dead Cells. Um, I just started that the other night. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe I didn't mention it on the What Have We Played Lately. Yeah, <laughs> now I that I you play like two hours. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but well, you just started, right? I just, like, yeah. I, I'm, my runs, I'm consistently getting to the first boss and getting my ass whooped. So, uh, that's where I'm at in that. Uh, and that, both those games, I think, are very good. So I'm excited. What was the other? To... I heard Dead Cells. Oh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, Red Dead, right. Um, oh, I guess I'll just pull a name out of the hat on the rest of these games that I want to play. Uh, a game called Moonlighter. I don't know a ton about it. Uh, I guess the gameplay loop is during the day you 
work as a shop owner and you sell like the idea of the game is to make an income and you're selling these items and you're kind of like a shop owner in a video game so you're selling like swords and yeah stuff and then your night job is to like dungeon crawl to get those items so you like go in and you fight your way through i completely forgot this game release this or 2018 is it it sounds really like a lot of fun yeah, yeah it sounds like your a, inventory like it sounds that. like a cool like uh a lot of games recently have come out that kind of do this like simple life type thing uh, i'm trying to think of one more of a simulation uh, yeah inspired. yeah like uh yeah. so it sounds like it's a lot like that during the day and you've kind of figure out and, and there's some weight to it. it's like oh i got the sweet sword i could sell it for a ton of money or i could use it to make to the, keep dungeon crawling the to dungeon possibly crawling. get better items yeah. right so like there's some of that in there i i don't know a ton about this game but what i've heard about it makes me really want to check it out I keep forgetting, you've mentioned this game a couple times when we've been hanging out, and, like, every time I get really excited, I'm like, that's such a cool concept, yeah. that, like, you're basically just the shop owner, and then you go get the stuff that you have to sell. Like, that seems like such a, like, basic, simple idea that could be really well executed. But it always, it makes you wonder in, like, RPGs, like, what the shopkeeper, and right. where does the shopkeeper get all this shit? And even, like, okay, sometimes you want to know the shopkeeper's story. Right. And in this game, it's like you get to finally see that through. Yeah. And uh, to stay on the topic of uh, shopkeepers, another game I have on my list is called The Messenger. And uh, Great game. Yeah, I, I, I need to play some more <laughs> of that game. So, I, And I guess there's like a cool shopkeeper moment. It is. It, I it, the, the right in that game is... Like, I wish... De I would say if I... I would prefer Dead Cells over The Messenger. They're both very similar games, even though one's a roguelike. Right. But, yeah, Dead Cells it has, like, the gameplay, but none of the writing that The Messenger has. So it's almost like if those two games could kind of, like, merge. combine yeah, and Yeah, because Dead Cells seems like... There's not. I mean, there's, there's some like, like little to no. There's dialogue. some little personality in there, but yeah. not a lot. Yeah. Um, but the, the messenger, the messenger and, is just. Uh, there's a ton of personality. So like I, I played through like the first half, I guess, of this game. I, I like first half is very good. It's not something I feel like I absolutely need to finish, but I threw it on the list anyways. It's a uh, some. Some I'm just going to mention, but not really talk a lot about. Guacamelee 2, really like the first game. That game was really good. I, uh, I like uh, a ton of Metroidvanias released in 2018. Yeah, uh, that's one where like yeah, I, think... I like the first game enough that I feel like I need to play that one. But um, yeah, I think if you liked one, two is just more one uh, with like kind of a more interesting story. Yeah, that sounds really, really cool. I'm sure I'll enjoy that. Uh Game I didn't play and kind of surprised me when I went through the year. Uh, Octopath Traveler. I never. I played the demo, um, but I never actually got around. I bought it and never got around to playing the full release. Uh, I played about twenty five hours and then I fell off of it hard once yeah. I realized each chapter was kind of repetitive and the eight characters like there's really no overlap interaction, and yeah. interaction of any kind. Yeah, I don't think I definitely wouldn't make any promises that i'll finish this game it's a long game too but uh i think like it looks really cool and i at least want to play like the first couple chapters of each character and just it's a it's a neat idea and, and there's one chapter or one st prologue story in particular i think me and george talked about it the dancer character yeah uh they, they go like weirdly mature especially for a nintendo game it like it's kind of fucked up what what's going on in that part of the story but the other like the rest of them are very kind of bare bones like especially um like Ulbrich the knight or whatever is like just a trope after trope after trope yeah. it's not even yeah. he's not even a character he's a caricature right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it seems like it relies pretty hard like it does like the eight separate stories or whatever and like that's their new thing but then the rest of it is just like we made that jrpg again I think the no. issue is that I've heard the combat's pretty. The combat is it's very fun. dynamic, yeah. And there's there's like a weak. They have like the persona weakness system, okay. Where like, the, like you got to find the right move the to. Type. There's types right. or whatever, like yeah. Pokemon style, right? It, it's more involved, I would say, than persona, but it's, it's very like satisfying. Certain weapon types will break enemies' armor, and when their armor's broken, they don't attack, and they're more vulnerable. They take more right. damage. So. Or kind of like a Final Fantasy uh, thirteen 
So it, like okay. when you do stun them, the paradigm, and finally the paradigm system. Right. So you, they could have like four armor, and you could save up four attacks, and they're weak to swords. So you hit them four times with swords, and then their armor is completely broken. Right. Or you break them down, then save up your attacks, hit them four times with swords, and that does like a ton of damage. Yeah, and when you save up okay. your attack, it's it's kind of more powerful, and then yeah, you can you can it's get to the point where you can whittle off four attack sword attacks. Attack. Yeah, gotcha. and you can also power up your special moves. So um, the hunter has like a rain of arrows attack where it'll hit everybody and it'll hit like up to five times or something. And you can also save that and do that four times. So it'll be four volleys of arrows that could hit up to five times. Gotcha. And then the hunter kind of doubles as like a kind of a Pokemon master too, where you can capture uh, enemies in battle instead of defeating them. And then you can use those enemies and you can summon them into battle and they have their own. They have so uh, many uses that you can use them and they have their own special attack per thing you capture. Uh, that was the character I chose. That was my main, was the hunter. Mm-hmm. Her story is, like, not revolutionary, but it's very... It's fine. Very JRPG. If you very have fine. A f- like, as a JRPG, if you just love turn-based RPGs in the JRPG style, this is a 10 out of 10, but the story is just so bland, and yeah. it brought it down for And me. this is one, like, too, like, time becomes an issue. Like, this is, what, an 80-hour yeah, game super long or whatever. Game, yeah. And uh, I actually, next, I had two more JRPGs on my list. <laughs> So, uh, Nino Kuni 2. That's one I got. And you love the first one. I I, I played like 200 hours of Nino Kuni. Like, I love that game. (laughs) The first Um, game is truly amazing. Everything down the art style, the. Yeah, that's the the bummer about this one is like they don't have the Studio Ghibli stuff. And that was like really cool. That just like draws you in. Movies like that was like really cool thing to have in a game. Like. Art direction is unheard of. I yeah. mean, it was like, right. and it, those cutscenes would be like 15, 20 minutes sometimes. Like you'd watch an episode of like an anime, right. basically. I it mean, was like or a Miyazaki film, yeah. right? Yeah. Plus, you know, there's a lot of just like the storytelling through those was so mature and refined. For a JRPG, sometimes the story can kind of take a back seat, where mm-hmm. you'll be playing and it's like get more powerful to stop this guy who's going to end the world, and yeah. it doesn't really matter. But that was kind of more grounded in a sense you're a little kid you do things with the combat was really cool combat was awesome because you like have your like and i think they changed that a bit in this one yeah i've heard that they changed that up a little bit i, I don't know how i feel about yeah. that I prefer yeah, they just kind of how did this game review not as highly as the first not as one highly as a, that's like pro- kind of my problem with like why i haven't gotten around to even trying it yet is it just sounds like worse nino cooney right mm-hmm. so it's like why go back to the well if right i could just and like jrpgs i like, one of my favorite genres of game but like in this day and age i don't finish many of them just because i like to play a lot i have a job yeah and they're not, a big like, time commitment usually i gotta cut the grass and shit. <laughs> so like so like getting around to playing a hundred hour game like it has to be pretty special and i like i'm like i said i'm naming three jrpgs on this list i will finish one of them and that one is gonna be dragon quest 11 I've heard that's a JRPG ass JRPG. That's yeah, supposed it's, to be like... it, there's no. It's not. I hear the music is really good. It's in really game. good. I yeah. played only. I played like the first two hours, and I was just like, "Yeah, I paid sixty dollars for this, but I'm gonna wait and pay sixty dollars again when it comes to Switch and just play." Like, I feel like that will be a better way to play it. So, I'm gonna wait, and get it on the Switch when it comes out. Um, Does it have a date or? I don't think. I think it's this year. It might have a date. I'm not 2019. sure. Twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen general. Um. But that is the one that I'm going to, I'll pour the time. B- and... Between that and possibly with uh, Joker being part of um, Smash with the possibility of Persona 5 yeah. coming to Switch. Yeah. That seems like having a portable system to play. To be able to play those games long, on the road is, or like wherever you are. Right. Just sitting on the couch really awesome. and playing that when you have yeah. something in the background. Or... Yeah. A lot of times we'll hang out on a Friday night yeah. and like we, I'd much rather just play on my switch then lug over a console tv and everything and plus those games jprds kind of lend themselves well they're not overly complex in their controls so you can fit them very easily to a couple buttons and mm-hmm. right right you don't have to have like the most precision to play through one of those games right, right. Yeah, and, it's mostly and, like, a lot going of times, menus and selecting uh, attacks it's not it's nice too uh in our podcast game category where like a lot of times you get to a certain point and there's a lot of like side stuff you can do that maybe isn't as important to yeah. listen. But you don't have to be fully invested. Right. Yeah. So like you can kind of chip away or you can grind a little bit and power up your dudes. And mm. I've never, never finished a Dragon Quest game. Uh, this might be the one I, I eventually get to if there's a lull. First one I 
finished. Um, like the Dragon very Quest, first game? The first... No. Oh, I was going to say, for the, the first, NES? First, I, I played Quest through that I game last was, year. Um, like the Japanese the version time. of the Famicom? Um, <laughs> the 10 on DS. Dragon oh, Quest okay. 10, which yeah. was an amazing game. Yeah. Eight's uh, really good. Eight's it's the one that kind of went mainstream, I want to say. I that was probably in the, like in the, the US. most popular yeah. one, it seemed like. I bought seven for the 3DS and never, I think I put like 40 hours into it and never went back to it. It was one that had like a very old school look, right? It was like P- almost like early PS1, late SNES. They, they updated look. the graphics. Yeah. Like it, it actually looks pretty good and plays well in the 3DS, okay. but um, it's another one of those like 100 hour JRPGs. Right. I mean, it's good to have on the go. The 3DS is a good, good place for that, but it was just, you know, all the things came out. You right. Commit less time to it. You forget where you were at. You don't know what characters you have with you or whatever, and it just kind of falls to the wayside. Yeah, it, it's hard being a JRPG fan these days. Yeah. With your, when you're an adult with responsibilities, especially. Especially because you know? it seems like I mean, like I I know we kind of said some negative things about Octopath and Nino Kuni too, but generally these games are good. Like. And, yeah. and those games, I, I think, are fine. I don't think they're bad. No, it's a matter of taste too. I, I think we're definitely more like pretty big fans of the series yeah, of the, of the genre. Yeah. A lot of people these days really aren't, and that's a kind of a tragedy. But yeah, yeah there's such a lot of people don't like it how slow it is, slow yeah. paced, and you just pick a move and yeah, like do, playing those games is just doing some math basically. Uh, not so much like, and that was a genre that I kind of matured into liking as a younger. When I was playing games, the only JRPG I liked was Pokemon. Yeah. And then kind of as I played more games, I got more and more into it. Just, you know, over time, it seems like it's just a, something that you might not like initially, but you find one that you really enjoy, and it can kind of open your eyes to the whole yeah. experience of them. Yeah, definitely. Like, I'm like that with – I mean, I, I've always liked JRPGs, but, like, strategy games for me are, is one like that, or simulation games. Mm. Okay. Oh, let's see. I got a couple more, so let's – Move on, uh, Ashen. That's another one. I want to play this for sure. It's uh, on Game Pass it's right on now. Game yeah. Pass. Yeah. I feel like there's no reason why I wouldn't. Kind of has that Souls like stuff. No I, faces on the characters. No though. faces. I love <laughs> that's, that. That's all right. I'm I heard sick of looking at faces of, uh, in games. So I heard it's not horribly long. I think it's 20 hours or yeah, something. That sounds great, and it sounds um, like a more forgiving Dark that, Souls. Yeah, that not, makes it more, more not as hard. To play. You can hire NPCs to come into fights with you and kind of. Go with you on your journey. I'm not sure exactly if it's. You can also get. I think you can play co-op too. Yeah, you can play co-op too. You have the option, which Mm -hmm. is cool. And and it got reviewed really well. People who played it said it's amazing. So that's definitely one that I missed because it came out pretty late last year. Yeah, it only came out like it came out like late December or mid December. Yeah, Yeah, that and below both came out like a week apart in the middle of December. It was really (laughs) weird. Below doesn't seem like a great Uh, game. I watched and uh, I I saw what I need to see of that game. I don't know. I want to play it. It's also on Game Pass, though, so maybe if I'm desperate one night, I'll just check it out. But uh, um, So there's that. Uh, Let's see. What other game? Uh, Detroit Become Human. (laughs) That's on my list, too. Uh, Tim and and George (laughs) both really like this game. Yeah, half half the half of the show really loves this game. So I think feel like we need to check it out. We need to rectify that. Um, I've heard I've heard some interesting things about this game in both directions. Yeah, I'm gonna try to go into it like clear clear head of all the things. It seems like a lot of people really like this game, and a lot of people really hate this game. Yeah. So. I but know. I I have really enjoyed David Cage's games in the past. Not beyond too much, but Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain. I, I really, really like enjoyed Heavy Rain. Rain, and then even uh, Indigo Prophecy yeah. before that. That game's not aged well. Mm-hmm. I tried to replay no. that like last year, or the year before. I think me and you tried to. Yeah, play that one. And and we, it's we, also we, like, like a thirteen-year-old. We got game, like so. lost in that first diner and couldn't figure out where the shit to go, and we were just like, yeah. Oh, I love that scene. That's, that's why yeah, I love. Was, that's why it's such really an affinity cool. for Travis. Out, I'm, al- I'm always hoping for a murder to happen in the Travis unisex bathroom. It pretty much is Travis. Uh, Travis Simulator. Travis Simulator 2006. I don't know when that game came out. Maybe earlier. Next than time that. we have like a eight inch blizzard, we're all going to <laughs> Travis and hoping Just for the best. Crossing our fingers. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna play. That. I I don't think I'm gonna like it. But I'm gonna Detroit? try and go in with an open mind. It yeah. Sounds like you have an open mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm try. I said I'm trying. I didn't say I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna check it out. I think the story in that game is really strong, and the decisions you make have huge impact. I mean, some of them are very heavily telegraphed. You understand what this is gonna result in, and some of them are a little more. You, gray you don't have much time to react, and you're like, 
oh man, this is really going to change a lot depending on what yeah. I do here. This is so stressful. Uh, I'll do this. There's, it's one of the few games where there's not like a clear cut. You know what you should be doing. Right. It's time. not. These are all the good. So it's choices. all gray areas. It's, it's a not, lot yeah. of gray areas. That's like a slippery slope, where... though. Like, I like, yeah. If it's just like good choice, bad choice, yeah. that's really, really boring. But then if it's like super unclear, and then you do a thing, and it's like, well, actually, I, I remember having this problem in like early Mass Effects where you'll be like, pick this option, and then Shepard says something completely fucking different. Yeah, it's not. It's not as bad as that. It's like you know what your character is gonna say. It's just like there's so much weight. That, like, you never know if it's the right decision. Like, right. I want him to say the exact dialogue option. Yeah, right. I don't know right. why yeah. games yeah. don't do that. Yeah. They'll just give you, yeah. like, at least the exact, like, opening sentence yeah. or something yeah. like that. Because, yeah. like, you'd pick, like, I don't know about that. And you'd be like, oh, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, what? I it was just that. like, yeah. I picked slightly disagree, not, yeah. like, flip the table <laughs> over in disgust. But I think also one of the, I don't know if this is, like, good or bad, but I think one of the parts of the story that's interesting is... The three characters that you control have very different things going on. And very different perspectives of the same like overarching story. So, so the three characters is that like a like just as a like you'll do a chapter as each one. Yeah, yeah. much does like the heavy rain. I, I played the demo with the android cop, and that was I thought that was pretty interesting. And played by like, the guy from Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> yeah. I think they do kind of a smart thing where as some characters' stories are ramping up, other characters are doing something like mundane or less interesting. So I love that. You'll switch between them and you're so like, man, you I really can't break. wait to go back to this. Yeah, right. And, There's a lot of situations. But now I gotta right. go get the groceries. <laughs> like. It's kinda it's cool. It's it's a there was a scene pretty early on with one of the characters that like I got hooked when I was playing that game. And I started the, telling the Jordan opening is a really strong point in that game from what I've gathered. I don't remember which character you open as, but... I think you start as Marcus or Alice. Yeah, Alice's story really early on is the one that... Like, yeah, that's you. definitely, like, the strong start, and then Marcus is a little bit slower to get going, yeah. and then um, the other, the android cop is kind of, like, that one is very much how you play the game. Yeah. Do that... you progress in the mystery, or... Are you fucking up every time you play right. as him and it gets like dead end, dead end, dead end? Right. Oh, I think George has sold me with that that sentence there. That that sounds really. <laughs> that cool. end, that yeah. end, that end sounds right <laughs> up my alley. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that one. I don't know when. I think it's still forty dollars on PlayStation. I don't know why I have a feather in my cap about not play, paying that much for that game, but. I'd pay that much for that game, and I've already played it. Because like, it's wanna... a shorter game, maybe. It's not. It's uh, not it has really nothing bad. to it's do like with the. Hours. It has nothing to do with the length. I just don't want to give David Cage any of my money. Uh, all right, moving on to some games I'm actually really excited to play. Jesus. Uh, Hitman Two. Yeah, you got to play this game. I love the first one. I've played the first like the one that came free. Sounds you can like play Ed's for free. Not going to play any 2019. Games. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like I've got two more 70, after this. Too, he's right? got like 700 hours. Of <laughs> but uh, Hitman quality gaming ahead play. of him. Hitman Two. I've got to I got to find time to play that because I really like the first game and this seems like more of the same. I don't really have a ton to say on this game. They do uh, make a lot of good quality of life improvements. <laughs> and he just turned the lights, turned the lights <laughs> off on him. He said, uh, yeah, you guys have already been recording this, this podcast for like 80 minutes. Uh, wrap it up. Yeah, you got He just gave us too. the uh, the five minutes yeah. dimmer. And then uh, I'm only going to talk about one of these. One of them is a remaster. But the biggest thing, uh, exclamation point on my list is Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. Yes. I, I played through Yakuza 0 twice. Uh, that was my first experience with that game, and I played through Yakuza Kiwami. I also, also the, like, one-off that I'm not going to really talk about at all, I want to play Yakuza Kiwami 2, which came out last year, as well as Yakuza 6. It was my 2018 game of the year. Yeah. And, and if you're, yeah, if you're a Yakuza fan, you're really going to love this it's, game. It's like a weird world where I played a game for the first time in 2017, like, new, I mean, it's been a series for a long time, but I played it, like, my first, uh, playing it was in 2017 i've only played two of the games and i'd like consider it among my favorite series mm. already like i i there is something about these games that's really special and fun and the stories are like pretty heavy-handed actually that i've seen so far but then like there's a really nice balance there with just like zany weird shit and then, really and, like. and then you get the melodramatic uh like tragic main plot but yeah, you also have all these sub stories that are just ridiculous, yeah. but and maybe also like, very fun. From what I've seen, maybe I'm giving it too much credit, but like the main stories feel like it's a goddamn like HBO show, and then 
like the side stuff is not just a, like not a know, bad one either. Yeah, like, like it's, a good it's show. good enough. Yeah, like, it's like a good and, and like it does like the kind of Metal Gear Solid. They are not unapologetic about giving you a forty minute cutscene mm-hmm. at times, and I really like that. And they're fun to play. I mean, the combat I'm not in love with. I'd say that's my like least favorite part of the game is fighting all those battles. But like that stuff sounds super interesting, and it sounds like six kind of streamlines it a little bit um and and that sounds really cool to me to have like less options you don't i don't know if there's less styles or i can't remember what i read about it but it's they got rid of all this like stances that you had in uh zero like the beast mode and all that yeah you you don't have to worry between but they made the combat more open-ended now like you aren't confined to like a small arena with the crowd just like as your barricade you can go throughout the uh, the city and fight yeah is it still like you're in battle mode or whatever? Yeah, yeah, you're still in battle mode. Like it, it still it's goes different into like, than like when yeah. you're, you're not it's just like, like punching dudes on the street. Like, okay, yeah. you're in battle mode now. Uh, plus, you get to play like there's a baseball sim, which is amazing. With Kiryu, even and you get to play the actual baseball itself, and it's it's more fun than it. Than it has any right should to be. be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's how all those games are. It's like there's like you try to explain it to somebody, and it just sounds like yeah. the worst. Like, what'd you do last night? Oh, I played Yakuza. Like, oh, what's that game about? I was like, well, last night I just got drunk and played darts with this guy, and he stole all my money, and then I was pissed, and then I, like, won it back playing pool with well, this other guy. It does guy. the Rockstar thing very well. Like, in Red Dead, you could just lose hours playing poker. Or yeah. Blackjack. Like, all that stuff works really well, and, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I think everyone would have many games they like and many games they don't like, but, like, there's so many levels to it. So you have this, like, probably in so most of these games, to you, 25 yeah. to 30, maybe 40-hour main story if you, like... I, I feel like it'd be really hard to just mainline those games because, like, there is, like, the leveling up aspect of those characters. So you kind of got to do some side stuff. Yeah. But, but then you have, like, these sub-stories that are pretty fleshed out, and there's a ton of them, and those tell... And then, like, even on a lower level, you can just, like, live in that world, and that's cool, too. You can go do karaoke or dance or watch in, pornos. In the, in, the, in, a in weird... the world you live in, and Res- in, I almost said Resident Evil Six, Yakuza Six. You, so you get like the main Tokyo city, Kamarucho, and then you also get yeah. uh, this time around. You're not in Osaka. You're in uh, Hiroshima, and Hiroshima is like a very kind of like small town seaside vibe that sounds really good so if you're like if you grew up in the suburbs you're really gonna appreciate this yeah. there's even like a, a set of sub stories that require you to go to a bar and listen to like alcoholic father's problems <laughs> and it's really it's like a japanese cheers it's really fun that sounds really and awesome it's it would be right up your alley yeah, yeah. I, I need to i know i need to play this game like this game yeah. I, I'm right there with you where, like, I feel like if I had played it, it would be amongst my favorite games of last yeah. year. I, I That's, like, the one I need to find time to go out of my way and play. Um, yeah, that's that's it for me. That's about it. I only have, like, 400 hours there of <laughs> video games to go back and play, and hopefully nothing comes out in 2019 I want to play. <laughs> well... Uh, you want me to go? Yeah. So yeah. there's a bit of overlap there. We mentioned Detroit and Ash, and those are both on my list. Uh, Gris, you convinced me to play that earlier. That sounds like a fun puzzle platformer. Uh, really relaxing game. Yeah. Uh, t- speaking of Metroidvanias, though, I feel like there was a ton that released last year, but I didn't get to m- most of them. Uh, Time Spinner this is, is on the my main list one too. I'm looking forward to. Yeah. This is like the unapologetically Symphony of the Night clone. Oh, I have heard of this. I hear the game like the gameplay goes in some interesting places that makes it not not at all similar. Right. It's so. like it sounds and looks like Symphony Yeah, like they and, and they do but... the map thing too where you know which areas you haven't been to yet. Do you get to like two hundred point six percent? Yeah, I don't know if there's like an inverted castle or any of that <laughs> shit. But uh yeah, I know very little about this game aside from what I just said, but yeah, it sounds right up my alley. Yeah. yeah, from what I saw, people who are very much into uh, Castlevania type games, mm-hmm. where that's like definitely their shit, and they'll put multiple of those on their game of the year list. This seemed like the best of like the right. five great ones that came out last year. So I feel like if you're gonna play one Metroidvania this from last year, this is probably the one to. All to right, all right, I'm adding it to the list. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> uh, also, I have Mutant Year Zero on here. Which is also on uh, Games Pass. This is a tactical game in the vein of uh, Mario 
Cross Rabbids or an XCOM, but it also adds this stealth mechanic to it where you get you got to get the drop on enemies or else you're kind of fucked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this it looks one, really cool. It's on, on my list to go back and play some more of. I've put a couple like ten or so ish hours into this. Uh, beat the first couple levels and it is brutally difficult. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's what I was afraid of. A lot of encounters are stealth based to the point where you want to pick off enemies if at all possible. If you can get one guy by himself, that seems like if they spot you with two or three or more enemies, you're just kind of fucked. Yeah, you have to. That's when it really like you have to cut your teeth and be very strategic about right. everything and maybe sacrifice a character for two turns because you're like, I have to go over there and revive him, but I can't move from this spot because I need to use my ability that gives me a 50% extra critical hit chance to maybe kill this guy so I can actually move over there. But the game has a lot of personality. Like the It's post-apocalyptic, po- right? Post-apocalyptic. Yeah. Um, All I know about this game is it plays like XCOM and there's a duck smoking a cigar. Yeah, and duck? So, I think his name is Ducks. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a badass. So like the main characters you play as... Um, there's the duck, who is kind of a more long-range character. He has a crossbow, so it's a quieter weapon, and he's kind of more um, like a support built, character, built for long range. And uh, his every character has their own like mutation tree, where um, you can unlock a power for him, where he'll sprout wings and he can fly to higher areas on the map, so you can get like better vantage points on people. Oh, so or, there's like some verticality to right. this too. Damn, and uh, the other is Love that. the that's a lot. <laughs> a humanoid pig who hangs out with you, and he's kind of more of a tank character. He uses a shotgun. He can yeah, the guy from uh, Beyond. Yeah, basically. Good evil, yeah. yeah, Beyond Good and Evil. <laughs> so, is there like a storyline reason why there's like anthropomorphic animals in this world? So it's like the world has just gotten they're, they're like, like so. Mutants. It's like, yeah, uh, it's like ah, okay, it's a mutation. So it's yeah. like affected both people and animals to the point where like animals have mutated and evolved to where they're intelligent as humans and for the most part like normal people are the minority and mutated animals or that's interesting people like are mutated to the point where they're barely people anymore do they do much with like story beats or is that just like we created this cool world now you're gonna do like we didn't have a budget to put on like an actual like are there like cut scenes and shit or is it just like there's like extended dialogue there's um there are a few cut scenes like the not like very intricate but to the point where I'm at in the story, uh, you and the pig guy are basically um, ra- like raiders, hunters that go out. There's like one main I capital. You're say raping and pillaging. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's one main capital city where they have like this older human who's kind of the leader, and you go out and you collect supplies and bring them back so that the world can continue to sustain on what you can go and get and kind of keep the people going. But then one of these guys who was like a top researcher goes out in the field he has a little cabin and he brings like two of the best hunters with him just for protection and so he hasn't responded he hasn't come back he's been gone for two weeks it's pretty strange he sends you two out to go check on him and you go to his cabin it's kind of ransacked nobody's there and he leaves a note that says i found this discovery uh this Satellite crashed up in, like, this northern area. I'm going to go check it out. Like, this could be the future. This could save a bunch of people. I'm going to go check that out, and you're kind of following in his footsteps to try to see what is going on. It sounds like that. It sounds very kind of done to death, honestly. It's like the the Fallout 3. It's not the newest story ever told, but it it fits the world. And uh, Yeah. This kind of reminds me of Darkest Dungeon, where it's like, an unapologetically difficult game and sometimes you're just especially this time of year in J- like the dog digs of January sometimes it's just like the game I'm in the mood for to play yeah so yeah I probably won't spend a substantial amount of time with it especially when we get into like the nitty gritty of games when we get to up. work yeah when it we, is very good though what yeah. I've played of it is it looks if really you cool. are it's on my Xbox I just haven't like if you are into it. that XCOM style game there's there are open areas where you kind of go around and you hunt for supplies and that's you can find chests that have new weapons or yeah. armor pieces and there's a full RPG mechanics where you level up your characters and you get new weapons, you get new armor. It, it is, and the mechanics are really sound. Like, it p- feels really good to play. It's just brutally difficult. Yeah. Cool. You got anything else? Uh, from... Yeah, last one is a remaster, uh, Spyro Reignited Trilogy. 
never played a Spyro game before, and I want to rectify that. This seems like a perfect way to do it. Yeah. So I, I played through the f- almost all of the first game. I was like hundred percenting it, and then like I played like three nights in a row where I came home from work and fired it up and played it until like I went to bed. And then oh, I it just, holds up. I never went back though. Uh, yeah, it was really. F- I mean, there's flying levels that are like. I, I mean, you can get through them pretty easily, but if you want to like hundred percent them, they. Those are a little... It's like finding age. other dragons and stuff, right? That's... Well, the flying levels are different. There's, like, there will be, like, ten chests, ten rings, ten... Uh, I don't remember what the other one... Ten, like, enemies, ten other things. And it's, mm-hmm. like, to get 100% of the goal of, like, the treasure from that map, you have to get all of them in one run and it's timed so it's like one of those things where like you have 20 seconds and then like every chest you oh, so, fl- you're, so you're gonna be replaying that You've, level yeah it yeah. takes like 20 30 tries for me to get through one of those and do it all it's yeah. like you get a certain amount of stuff just for doing each of those individually but to get it all you have to do them all in one run mm. so like completely optional not paramount to the game i don't even think you have to play every level in that game because it's kind of i think it's like collectathon there's... gated where you like you need nine dragons to get to the right. next world, so like you pro- you don't even have to play every level if you don't want to. Right. to like, beat I think the to game. get to the last world, you don't have to get all the dragons. <laughs> no, that. no, you have to get like sixty percent or yeah. something like that. So like you don't have to do the harder stuff, but I was, and like the, the harder flying stuff was kind of annoying and felt like a PlayStation One game, which it is, <laughs> which it is. But like the actual, like the bulk, those are only like for every world. There's like five or six levels and that's one every world so it's like minimal content is on that i don't even think you get any of the dragons from those that's just like extra treasure so like you don't have to do them but the actual like boots on the ground spyro running around mashing shit with his head and doesn't get any better flaming people feels really good still and you can run real fast and run into a guy and it kills him and it's really gratifying and you can light like the and like all the enemies in that game are so charming they're like these big dumb idiots oafs and you just like can flame like, weird burglars and stuff yeah there's like weird burglars that steal uh dragon age and the, or dragon eggs and then uh they there are like enemies that'll moon you so they yeah. just like turn around like like you're chasing them and like they get to a certain distance so they'll just like turn around and pull down their pants like, those butts look in hd <laughs> oh man crystal clear <laughs> Better than snakes and uh, ultimate. No, oh, don't, 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 that's, don't get us back to that. That's not a very that's high bar. Don't there. even get us back to that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think if you haven't, if you like like that style of game, the you know if you're into Jack and Daxter or anything like that, these games are definitely worth playing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely something I'm gonna probably pick up. Forty. Is it forty bucks? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't think it's full price. Yeah, I think I think. Uh, that sounds right. Well, that's it for me. Uh, I guess I'll go next. So my list, we already talked about most of them. I have Ashen. I want to play more of uh, Mutant Year. Uh, Time Spinner I want to check out. Also, uh, I got Diablo 3 on my Switch. I do want to see kind of how that looks and plays. I've played that game to death on PC. I have several hundred hours. I have maxed out characters. But I would like to maybe start like a seasonal character and play some dungeons, see how it looks and plays. Maybe if a couple of us get it, get together and yeah, that's a really run good some dungeons co-op and stuff. Game. I'm planning on getting that and playing through it on Switch. Yeah, I don't know. I've never played it before, so I'll have to, I'll have to I, ship I, have, I haven't played it either. Yeah. I haven't played a Diablo game. I'm in the same boat as George. I've played like over 100 hours on PS4 <laughs> and PC each. So I, I really like that game. Yeah, I mean, definitely that also kind of had the Destiny Year 2 revival where it came out and it was pretty rough, and then they came in and changed everything and made it way better. It has the expansion, which was awesome. You, you have the two extra classes they added, the Necromancer and the Crusader. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of choice, and it's just a really good RPG dungeon crawler. I mean, Yeah, as far as, like, the loot-based game, yeah, that, it's that one was of the a, one of the ones that started it, and it's still one of the best series for it. So um, Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to put another 100 hours into it, get another max level character. That's why I don't want to buy it on (laughs) Switch. I'm really afraid I'd do that in a heartbeat. But um, I I definitely just want to, like, build up a character, maybe play it in a group setting a few times, just kind of check it out how it plays on Switch. And, you know, it seems like it's a good, like, back burner game when other things are out and, you know, there may be a little bit of a lull, go in, level up my character a bit, try out a class I haven't done before. 
you know, just kind of play around in that game because I just think that is so fun to play and the loot system is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, that game's really good. No, other than that, I want to play the Call of Cthulhu game that came out in October. I, I know nothing about this game. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty in the dark in it as well. I know it's first-person shooter-ish with, you know... I think it has RPG elements. Some RPG yeah. elements. It, it, I don't know. I, I haven't looked too far into it. I just... I like Lovecraftian as a theme and... Uh, yeah, it's like the only good Lovecraftian adaptation we've had so far in video games is not even technically yeah. <laughs> Lovecraft adaptation, Bloodborne. Right. So... So, I don't know if this is a good game, a bad game. I don't know how it was reviewed. But I've heard some pretty polarizing words about it. I don't know. It seems like a interesting world, though. Yeah. If, it, if it plays well enough, I think I could <coughs> kind of grit my teeth and get through it if the story is interesting and kind of wild and you get the cool Lovecraftian beats where you see giant monsters or weird shit happens. Your mind, you know, some terrifying dream sequences or right. you go underwater at a certain point. Like, I just want to see, like, what weird, kind of weird, weird geometry. Right, yeah. I want to see kind of all the weird shit that you get into in that game. Do you go to Ryolith? Do you do, do all that shit? Do you see the sunken and gods? Is it, is it based off the Call of Cthulhu short story, or is it based off a of shadow over Innsmouth, like that one Dark Corners of the Earth game that released, like, ten years ago? I'm not That I'm not sure of. Yeah. I don't know exactly what the story beat is, and I think that might be better to go into it kind of as blind as possible. Right. Um, but I don't know. It just seems like an interesting concept. And I know we have that other Cthulhu game coming out in March or something, February or March. There is? There's a, it's called like Sunken City or something. It's, oh, right, right, right. Uh, not directly, but it seems very Inspired. Lovecraftian. And, yeah, uh, you, you like walk into a like pirate bar and there's squid stuff attacking you. So. Oh, hell like, yeah. The bar floods and... You wait, like you walk out of the bar, and then there's no water, and all the buildings are flipped upside down, and it's like, you know, just very much like a fever dream nightmare with these nightmarish creatures. It just seems like I like all that. I think that's cool, and I think if they do enough visually and story wise to keep those beats interesting, I'm I'm in for it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is that all you had on your list? That's that's everything I had. We talked about the other three that I had. I have no overlap with you. <laughs> I'm just I have a couple games, but uh, a lot of the ones that I had on my list before today, uh, you guys haven't touched on, which is probably not a great thing. Um, <laughs> the ones that you guys already touched on, uh, Moonlighter, I added to my list because of Ed just saying it. Mm. It sounds really cool. Um, I've heard only from him a couple times about it, uh, but I'll definitely check that one out. Gris, after your, I don't know, pseudo review today, it sounds like something I'd be into. It's a very, yeah, calming and it's um, a cool game. Dark Souls Remastered. I've never played a Dark Souls game. I feel like this is kind of my time to jump in. Uh, so I'm probably just going to steal George's copy and have him Sherpa me through <clears throat> as much as possible. Um, just because uh, I feel like I at least have to check it out. I feel like I've played the first like half hour of Dark Souls one time. Um, yeah, that's one of those games where like it takes some work to become... A yeah, fan. you have to learn kind of like how to spec your character to. Yeah. The... I feel like I don't want to go into it alone. Yeah. I want somebody yeah. to like tell me. Like almost not what every to do, game but, like, in that series has taken me questions. a couple swings before it, I finally like connected with it. It's one of the. Yeah. It's a strange game in the sense that like, by the time you beat it the first time, you know everything about that game. You know how to spec your character. You know what armor sets are good. You know where all the secret shit is. You, you have know. to. There's no. Like, <laughs> there's no other option. Like right, and, and it's one that definitely sticks with you. Like I hadn't played it probably like a year or two before I picked it up on Switch again, and it was like, you know, it, it was like old hat. I knew, right. I still remembered where everything was. I remembered how to get from point A to point B. There was like a few things I had to remember, like look up or kind of be like, yeah, how how do I get from, from this place? I know I place? need this item because right. that's going to be super helpful here, but how the hell do I, yeah, there's right. some of that. There's like on. a little bit of that, but for the most part, it's like I remember all the bosses. I know where all the NPC summons are. Like there's a lot of stuff in that game that like, after you kind of bash your head into the wall over and over again, it's just it's ingrained. Yeah, it in there. makes you become like an expert. I definitely feel like uh, I don't, I played through the first one twice, and like my knowledge of that game is on par with a game like Dead Space that I've beat like twenty five times, <laughs> and it's just like I, I know everything about this game because I had to or I'd be screwed. Right. So yeah, I'm excited to check that one out. Um, probably become an expert. 
The rest of these I have games, experts. I have experts. <laughs> I'm here to fix the cobble. Uh, the rest of these games, I'm not super excited about, but just want to check out uh, Battlefield Five. I really liked Battlefield One, and by this I mean I just like the storylines. Um, mm-hmm. It's a game that I'll. Rent. I forgot that game even came out. Um, I did too. <laughs> I think it had like the worst selling yeah. numbers for a Battlefield game in a long time. It's really time. weird because I think people really liked one. I really liked the storyline in one. It was kind of cool. That was uh, a World War One game. It was in World War One. That was and a cool played game. Played as like yeah. five different characters. I think they brought that back with like the segmented, like separate so, s- short stories. I, always, I thought and that it's was back a neat in, idea. And yeah. it's back in World War Two, so I'm excited to do that. I'll, I'll rent it and I'll play through it. Um, I thought the story so was just the campaign. Yeah, yeah, it was a yeah. good story. I have, one was it. I mean, I have no like desire to do it right now. I'll eventually get to it. Um, the online shit in one was really good too. Like yeah. I really like that. I it was like, like an online shooter. A lot of online. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I don't play a lot of those uh, games camp- anymore. Campaign only. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not screwed on this yeah. one. I rented Battlefield One. You guys aren't gonna play their. Fortnite mode? No. Uh, better battle, battle, what are they do called? They have battle, a, they're, they're, they're they have a battle it's in the mode. works. It's not out yet, though. They launched the game without it, which well, was that, dumb as shit. More After Why? Black Ops 4 came out and was like, we have it. And Just we made wait it like... and release your game with the thing that's going to sell your fucking game. I don't know. I prefer that they have a storyline. Call of Duty's not doing that, and I don't know if they're going to... Th- I feel like... Battlefield, I doubt they are. Or Black no. Ops 4. Yeah, yeah. I think they realize at this point people don't yeah. care anymore. I don't know. I I... I like the story. Yeah, I mean, Especially like if they keep the them going and they do, sure. they do like these, like uh, Call of Duty World War Two. They did like a really grounded, like emotional storyline, mm-hmm. and that one was really good. I feel like they did something similar. They've always Battle done like they're, they're <laughs> like they put money into those stories when they used to have them in Call of That's Duty. That's why like, they don't do them anymore. They, they had so they had A list right. actors. They had yeah. uh, shit. But yeah, so I'm gonna check that one out. Um, A list pedophiles. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they were always a little too like grounded in reality for me. Like I, I would have liked them to go more yeah. of like action hero route. I think I Battlefield's like been more like time. that. They were they were like a bit, but I would have like just don't even try the emotional stuff. Just like get me this ridiculous game where I mean, like Alan Rickman's the bad guy and I have to shoot him in the head. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, they definitely <laughs> had that going for a long time. Like the Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare Two storylines. You were definitely like essentially a superhero saving the world. Yeah. Um but, like, and, World uh, War II is probably the most memorable storyline for me. And it was just, like, about a f- pair of friends. And, like, your friend got captured and you were just, like, going to save him. I don't think I ever played that one. It was really cool. The Black um, Ops story is, like, a little more zany. Like, yeah, it's, like, literally that scene from T2 when you're driving in the trench and you have the shotgun that flips around. and That you, was awesome. And you go through and you do the Bay of Pigs for JFK and you go meet him and shit. Like, there's, there's a lot of, like, weird there, stuff like that. I need like, more of that. <laughs> the late 2000s, like, early 20-teens, I don't know what you want to call that time period, but those, those storylines in the Call of Duties then were, like, pretty out there. That was um, when Call of Duty was, like, that was its heyday. For and sure. then they, yeah. they reined it in for World War II and now they're just not doing it anymore. Uh, but Battlefield 1 was really cool. I, had, I actually really liked that story. Uh, the Battlefield, the other ones that I've played have all been pretty garbage. I did not like Battlefield 4 storyline. Uh, yeah. And then, like, yeah, I played Battlefield rough. Hardline and that game was, like, <laughs> one of the worst stories I've ever played. But... The other games I have on my list, um, this one I bought at launch and was really excited for and then, like, played two hours of and hated it, uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Um, it's oh, supposed yeah. to be, like... This has been, like, dr- like it's gone down to, like, 20 30 bucks throughout the year. Like, well, I've I seen it as it. low as, like, $25, I think. I mean, I, completely I, s- forgot about I still that. have it. Uh, I've heard they've made a ton of improvements. Like, it launched essentially broken, and that's why I stopped playing it is I got, like, two hours in. And the game crashed like three times at the same spot mm-hmm. for me. Uh, I reviewed pretty well, I think. Yeah, I don't I, know. I think there were like some game breaking issues though. Like if you did one quest line before another, like you couldn't progress well, in it, certain for me, things. It was or... like really, really early on. Like mm-hmm. I was still doing intro stuff. Like I hadn't learned how to fight yet, <laughs> and it crashed for me. You, you were like, still in tutorial times. territory. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah. uh, I've heard that, that it's been improved. I know it's kind of a long game, but I like the idea of like having a Skyrim without all the like epic. Like yeah. zany stuff, it's right. kind of, kind like of a, a grounded, like more like realistic, a, a grounded, sounded um, very cool idea. Too Middle realistic. Ages storyline, and you like essentially become a knight. There's that seems a... really cool, and I want to check it out. Um, it's like Eastern Europe, right? Like, uh, I think you're in England. Uh, There's a pretty funny story about that. They 
<laughs> the guys who made it did a Czech Republic. A live... Oh, wow. I thought it was in England. Yeah, yeah it's very Eastern Europe. They did a, a live demonstration of how the armor works in the game by, like, at some game event, two guys showed up in knight's armor and were beating the shit out of each other, and they were like, yeah, that's how the armor works in our game. Like, we render all these pieces individually, and, like... Wow. <laughs> yeah, like, it seemed it, really cool, the uh, combat... From what I had learned, and I honestly, I fought one guy, and mm. he was like, the guy you get your sword from is like, why don't you smack me with that, and I'll show you how to use it or whatever. Uh, it seemed a lot like For Honor, where, like, you have to choose where you're going to strike from, and, mm. like, if it's going to be strong I like that combat in that game. It's kind of cool. It's hard to get used to, though. It's I very like different. Game. I think so it has, like, a I'll have to, high learning curve. And it sounds like it has, it's like, very rewarding. It has some, like, really good legs on it but only for the PC version. So, like, what I'm seeing here is the console versions are just kind of garbage. Also, it reviewed well on PC. It reviewed really well on PC, but, like, yeah. it just doesn't run at all. <laughs> well, I think it's because it's so ambitious and it did really there's, like, well, so many dude. assets I and also, there's so much going on. I also had a launch PS4 when I played it. Now I have a PS4 Pro, so I feel like it might be better equipped. It's possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll probably give it another shot. Maybe not beat it, but at least... Put some more time into it, especially because there's about. been patches since then. So, mm. um, like thirty gigabytes of patches. <laughs> yeah, I think the first patch was like honestly like fifty gigs. Jesus. Like day one launch, they had like a fifty oh gig God. patch or something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I want to check all that about one out. this game. Uh, and the last one on my list, I have no desire to play, but I like the style of game, um, and it seems like a cool setting. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution came out this year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, about that, too. <laughs> it's something that, like, I haven't heard a ton about, but I used to love, like, Roller Coaster Tycoon and mm. games like that, and it seems like that with dinosaurs, and then eventually the park falls apart, and you have to, it's like, it becomes like a kind of RTS survival game, from what I under understand. Yeah, I really like how it, like, flips like that. Yeah. Like, you build your park, and then it go turns on you, and you have yeah. to, like, kind of like, get as many people out. Uh, it seems like a lot like that game Plague that everybody played on their phone for a while. Like, oh, yeah. Kind of like a strategy, yeah. like, try to, but the opposite. Instead of trying to kill everybody, you're trying to get everybody out. I want to check it out. Um, it's on everything. I think it's on phones and everything. Yeah. So I'll check it out at some point. It seems like something I'd sink some time into at some point. Yeah, and I think they added, like, big attention to detail in the way that there's yeah. a ton of uh, species of dinosaurs you can have yeah. in your park and... There are a lot of the like uh, zoo tycoon or roller coaster tycoon things where you know you put up shops and you manage inventory right. and you like all like I got I used to be that was like my favorite kind of game when I was like early high school. I think a lot of people that's one of the earliest love, games uh, that they played. Business sim the games, the Sims came out. yeah, business yeah. sim stuff is awesome. So I yeah, Sim City, like I'm excited. Was awesome. Sim City was a lot of fun. I'm like kind of excited to check that one out. It's one where like I don't expect it to be great, mm -hmm. but like I expect it to be kind of fun for yeah. A couple settings. And I, I think it actually reviewed pretty decent. Like, I think people who played it but, said it was good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't get a ton of those type of games, so... Yeah, we don't. If I can give them the whatever, the 20 bucks or whatever yeah. it is uh, on sale, and maybe they make another one next time, it's not Dinosaur. I really want to know how, like, the story stuff up. is, because I know, like, Jeff Goldblum and B.D. Wong and yeah, all them are people, in the game. People came oh, in to no do shit. voices. Yeah, like, they... Bryce Dallas Howard, like, all of them were... Wow, yeah. I'll have to... Uh, I'll let you guys know tackle it cool i think that does it it's everything a lot of games we had a lot of catch up to do and, and which sucks because oh yeah yicks out and, yeah we got yicks, and, yicks out in like, like 87 days. hours <laughs> are, we, are we what are we doing with yick do we know are what we do you all mean? playing it are we i'm, I'm probably, playing it i'm probably not gonna play it until one of you guys finishes it i'm playing it from we'll probably do a uh t tutorial territory on it and make a little video uh, talk about what it's all about. Yeah, that's the first game of this year that I'm pretty excited for. Yeah. I'm excited too, is it's like such an unknown. I don't know much <laughs> about it aside from that's it's perfect. An RPG. That's yeah. perfect. It's a postmodern RPG. It's a postmodern RPG. For a postmodern RPG. A postmodern RPG for some postmodern boys. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time.